eat. Bama's character in another game he's in with me is a uh, uh, lecherous and. Uh, it's really weird because I'm the GM in that game. So when he's making a pass or saying naughty things to the NPCs, it's kind I mean, I have to role play the NPCs response. And that's <laughs> a weird situation to be in. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, going in before we start doing this, um, did anybody actually use any of those backgrounds for those uh, for the characters like those uh, Hell Riders or anything? I did. Okay, which one not. are you? The uh, Gauntlet. Uh, Order, Order of the Gauntlet. Of the Gauntlet. <laughs> okay, awesome. Anyone else? Nope. Okay. I didn't quite know what it, what it meant, so I just didn't. It's very small amount of story in this one that leads into slightly more character stuff in the actual descent into Avernus. Okay. Had, uh, had, you, all, had you offered me the Harper, I would have took the background. I did not have that book at the time. It came in yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah, I like the <laughs> we, We've got a water deep. Uh, it's on hold right now because it's a midweek. Park's been so crazy. But, and the factions play a large role in that module. Yeah. And, like, everybody hates the Order of the Gauntlet people because of the way I portrayed them. Oh. Like, nope, we're not dealing with those. And then there was uh, the Grey, which is basically uh, like uh, wizarding guards that do private security. Mm. Played those in such a way they didn't like. Most of them are part of the Harper. I actually like the Harpers in uh, Neverwinter, so I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah, let's do that. Um, do y'all want to go by... notification that we are live? Awesome. Uh, do you guys want to go by your real names, character names, or something in particular? I was trying to keep it simple, so my character name is Lego Lindsia. <laughs> Lego Lindsia, and you're a cool. ranger. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> I'm a wood elf ranger, like Legolas. But fair yeah. enough. Lego Lindsia. Uh, so I don't care. Lindsia. You could say either for me, and it's pretty much the same. <laughs> awesome. So then, and we are live, right, Bama? Sir, are we live? Yes, we are live. Okay, fantastic. Uh, welcome, everybody, to uh, watching what may be an absolute train wreck of a D&D &D, uh, <laughs> D &D session. Uh, we are getting together for Extra Life so that we can raise for charity, uh, raise some money for the Children's Miracle Network, and play D&D, &D, uh, maybe be some murder hobos, maybe not, and uh, see what we can figure out about the Cult of the Dragon. Um, if you don't know me, uh, I am BJ from the geek to geek podcast and uh, the Dragon Quest FM podcast and will be your wonderful and slightly sarcastic DM tonight. And then why don't everybody else go through and introduce yourself and tell us about your characters? Okay, well, I guess I will go next since nobody else is speaking up. <laughs> I, I am Alinzia and I am the one of the co-hosts of the Nerdberg Review, along with Todd, who's also going to introduce himself here in a second. I am also the host of my HGTV Addiction podcast. Both of those are podcasts. And I am playing a wood elf ranger named Leo Lindsia. <laughs> and I have played quite a bit of D&D, &D, but usually Todd kind of holds my hand and walks me through everything. So I kind of suck at it. So this will be exciting. Awesome. Uh, I'm so excited to have uh, Lego Lindsia here. That's like one of the best names I've seen. Well, like I'm just... oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Todd. No, that's okay. Hi, I'm Todd. I'm the other co-host of the Nerdberg Review, along with Lindsia there. I am going to be playing Job Jebija, a uh, Job gnome, Jebija. a proud gnomish uh, paladin. Uh, and so get ready to watch me be noble and courageous and all the things I'm not in real life. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, hi, that's me. I am Bama Shocks. I am a Twitch streamer, and you may know me from such D&D &D live plays as King of the Hill. We, we do Saturdays and Sundays right here on Twitch. I am playing a stout halfling fighter named Lily Eversnack. 
Ooh, I don't mind if I have a snack. <laughs> I didn't bring any snacks with me in here. I just got a bottle of water. What's wrong with me? <laughs> I got chocolate. All right. And what about right. you, Air Troll? This is your first, I'm... this is your introduction to D&D. So for everyone listening or watching, I'm not sure how you do this. Uh, you can see I'm used to podcasting. Uh, this is going to be your first time and it's going to be a trial by fire. So tell us what I can, tell me what I can do to you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Um, yeah, so this is my first, uh, first time ever playing D&D of any, any kind of tabletop RPG. Um, I'm going to be playing a half elf ranger named Aerith. Um, and yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm going to try and not screw it up for everybody else. That's, uh, that's my goal tonight. Man, you play D and D very differently than I do as a DM. <laughs> uh, okay. So for everybody listening, for everybody watching and everyone playing, I figure I should give just a little bit of backstory on where we are right now. Um, right now, this is a module that leads into the descent into a Vernus hardcover uh, that they had put out, which is actually a prequel pre-story happens before the uh, new video game uh, Baldur's Gate 3. So all of that stuff kind of ties into the main story of Baldur's Gate 3. So we're like one chapter ahead of where uh, that hardcover starts. This kind of gets you used to uh, what the adventure hook in that particular uh, in that particular hardcover is. So if we do decide that we want to do this more, uh, and people really want to give us lots of money while we stream, then uh, that would be a good. I wanted to make sure that we had something that might tie together. Um, as we start right now, everyone is in uh, the town of El Turel. Um, I'm probably going to pronounce things wrong or the or differently than other people uh, other people do. So uh, just bear with me. But we are uh, in the town. Uh, we're in the town of El Turel right now. And lately, there have been some problems with the cult of the dragon. They have raised and sacked the town of Green Nest. Uh, to the south, and they are uh, really causing a lot of trouble along trade routes. Um, they are transporting all kinds of stolen goods uh, between Baldur's Gate and Waterdeep, and right now they have a kind of small presence north of El Terrell, and uh, we are getting together with the leaders of the Flaming Fist, the Hell Riders, and the Order of the Gauntlet to kind of figure out what we can do about those cultists and those uh, the, just their awful things that they're doing, kind of causing trouble uh, that we, you know, we don't really want our trade routes messed up. So um, as we begin, we are sitting in a tavern. Like, I know it's really, really uh, unique to do this. <laughs> I, I figured that if we're going to start d and I might as well do something like, I mean, this has been around for like 40 years, so we might as well start like uniquely in this. So I figured putting you guys in a tavern would be like the best place to start, right? Uh, nobody's done this before. Raise uh. your hands. Has anybody done this? Done a tavern before? I no, I don't. I don't. I didn't know there were I've taverns never, in D anD. So. I've never done a tavern. <laughs> Good, excellent. I'm glad to see that we got uh, that. Uh, hi, I'm Bama. I'm a tavernaholic. <laughs> every, I am too. Every, I can't stop people from going to inns and taverns. Like every, that's where I just go. Like, hey, can I go see an inn? Every uh, every one shot I've ever done starts in a tavern. I, I don't I don't doubt it. I mean, there's there's not much better to do it other than I've also had them start with a job board in front of them and telling them to pick a, a banner off of it. That one works pretty well, too. It's like, hey, y'all are here. You all see each other and you're doing this. So you guys, on the other hand, are in a tavern. You have been called uh, by o Onthar Froom. He is a paladin of the Order of the Gauntlet, and he is now pounding his fist against the table, calling the room to order. My friends, I'm glad to see you've gathered here today to discuss the growing threat of the Cult of the Dragon. We've received troubling news that the cult has burned down the town of Green Nest to the south. There are rumors now that the cult has become bold enough to even conduct rituals in the Eltergard woods north of here. Together, we can deal a swift blow to the Cult of the Dragon by attacking their forces, and while they scheme in our local woods, I say we put aside our squabbles, you with the Hell Riders, and you. 
whose name I can't remember because I'm not looking at it right now. The Flaming Fist. Uh, the <laughs> I say we put aside our squabbles and act. What do you say? Can we stop these cultists? Yeah. 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 <laughs> So the the room, this is a fairly small gathering. So this is a fairly uh, powerful man from the Order of the Gauntlet uh, standing basically in front of a group of maybe six or seven people trying to give them a Braveheart speech. And so that's why it feels like it feels. It's uh, it's something that's very important. But, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all are in a small group. Um, you're surrounded right now by a few humans. There are about three people from the Hell Riders. Uh, there are about two or three people from the Order of the Gauntlet there that uh, that Anthar Froom brought. And uh, you have the leaders of all of the, uh, excuse me, uh, the leaders of the other other factions, uh, Duke Older Ravenguard from the Flaming Fist and uh, Gideon Lightward from the Hell Riders are sitting here along with some of their uh, their people. Um, so this is where you guys are sitting in this meeting. He has called you to action and scene. Everybody, yeah! And, and a small voice in the back of the corner goes, Freebird! <laughs> uh, on Thunder's like, well, what's holding you up? Who wants to go? Me! Says Job, the gnome. Sarcastically. So, <laughs> he's like, I didn't invite you here just to have you sit there and listen to me talk. It may sound like I want to talk, but I don't. He, he goes ready. on. You're ready. Uh, Gideon, why don't you tell them what they're going to get into? Now, Gideon is the leader of the Hell Riders. The Hell Riders were a group of, of adventurers who actually went uh, with the Archangel Zariel into Avernus, into the, the Nine Hells, and rode with her as she attacked the devils. The Hell Riders were able to come back out after she fell, and they are a now a faction uh, of, of, I don't want to say mercenaries, but they are there protecting uh, Elturel and the 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 city here and he he looks at you and he says everyone i know that this doesn't sound like it's a big deal i know that the way that onthar makes this out is like it's some overly melodramatic that we have some bandits that's not the case Elturel is in real danger at this point these cultists they're trying to bring back tiamat they're trying to work with Zariel and they're trying to destroy Elturel. I know it. I have information that I probably can't share with you, but if we don't stop them right now, we're not going to have another chance while they're meeting in the woods north of town, while they're meeting in the Elvesgar woods. I will do everything I can to help protect those people. I appreciate I've got nowhere that. better to be. Will the they people... be gold? <laughs> There could be gold. Uh, I mean, you might find you might find some gold on the on the the cultists. They have been stealing gold. I would assume they have it somewhere. They sure have not sent it back to us. Um, you will probably find gold. I can't say you'll find glory or life after the next few days, but you might find gold. All right. So where do we need to go? There's a road that leads a little north of town that uh, you're going to be able to find. Uh, you're going to be able to find them in in the woods. They've set up camp there. They're doing something. I've gotten word that they are running some kind of job. That, that is where they're basing. And I've heard of rituals. That is all I know is that I've heard of rituals. And I, I'm just worried about the city, everyone. He at this point he has a a teenage hell rider. Uh, she is a young female human uh, young lady uh, named Rhea, and uh, he looks. He's like Rhea. We'll go with you. She knows where where to start. She was the one who found the initial indications that they were that they were in the woods, and she can lead you to at least where we found that. After that, I'm not sure it, you're going to be on your own. Okay, well, I am ready. I grab oh, my yeah. stuff and I'm by the door. Okay. I'm ready too. <laughs> Gideon, 
looks at everyone and he he's thank you i i appreciate this he he offers you his blessing and at this point you have a advantage on saving throws for the next 24 hours so you feel as you're walking out the door kind of your skin feels like it's on fire but in a good way like you've been out in the sun working all day long and you come in and your skin just has that nice heat from you've been working you feel that way Burn you know really that... easy so that's usually not a good feeling and i'm i'm all i'm all thick skinned and i don't burn so i'm like yeah i've been outside <laughs> that's what it feels like so for you you feel much better than what i described um, <laughs> but he he's given you his blessing uh, and you feel slightly stronger now because of it uh Rhea walks to the outside of the of the building and says come here come here come here everyone come here i also don't know why i chose that voice but but I did. Uh, <laughs> she goes, Everyone, here's a horse for you. If you would like to have a different horse, well, I can't do anything about it. These are the ones that I was given. And she hops on her horse and begins riding toward the west of town. All right. So I hop on a horse and follow her. Hold. I'm, I'll take I'm, the next I'm, one. And... I'm looking up at this horse. It's just three times my size. And, and I'm just like... <laughs> How do I get on this thing? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. I bring my horse around and offer a hand. And, 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 Can and I get I, a ride? I, I jump up and catch your hand. <laughs> uh, and I, 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 I hoist you up onto your horse. Make an acrobatics yeah. check, Bama. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I'm already gone, so I can't help either of you. No, nope, uh, you're help, gone. <laughs> Reva's gone. Uh, 22. Oh, man. Yeah, you passed. You land on the saddle with a thud like you were born in the saddle. It's like you just fly up. You are you might as well be uh, Bilbo Baggins at this point getting helped up as uh, as lucky as your leaps have been. It's uh, <laughs> You've never not spent time in a saddle. E even though the saddle's the size of a bathtub for me and I can't it is. the it reins. Absolutely is you. Uh, you should probably do something about that, but you can't. So I'll just hang on and to the wave. I'll, I'll, I'll hang on to the pommel. <laughs> That's about all I can reach. That is that is true. They just said you have, and to be fair, I didn't think about you being a halfling, but it does say you just get a riding horse. So <laughs> hello, you've got a large horse. <laughs> so so everyone's going. No, no needs a little help. Uh, yeah. Oh hello. yeah. Job do you back want your there own horse help. or do you want to ride with me? Yeah, I'll ride with you. All right. I uh, hop off the horse and pick him up and then climb up in front of him or behind him, rather. Yay! Here we go. Awesome. Good adventure. <laughs> and off we are. <laughs> so as you you go down the street, you 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 turn to the west out of the out of the tavern, and then eventually uh, the road curves up to the north. You you see a light shining above the city. Uh, you guys are fairly used to seeing it. It's called the companion. Uh, it, it is a, a protector of Eltrell. The, the city has a, what was a former planetar, a uh, former angel, basically a celestial living, uh, basically protecting it, powering it, uh, with this holy radiance over it, the light from the companion is just shimmering down. It's just golden and really beautiful. Just the, the most beautiful thing that, that you've seen the, the light is shimmering the, the trees you see around El trail. It really right now around you looks like heaven. If you it's, it's pastoral, it is just as beautiful as you can see the the golden rays land on the grass and partly purple rays over here you hear birds singing like it is gorgeous birds are chirping as the, as you follow raya and as you enter the woods um everyone make a perception check please how do i do that uh Leo. roll go ahead Oh, roll your roll a twenty and add uh, your wisdom to it. Yeah, and, get the wisdom. And you should have one on your character sheet that actually says just per, uh, perception on there. Ooh, 
If you have a number uh, next to perception on your sheet, roll use that Use it. Yeah. yeah. You said D20? Yes. Maybe I did this right. Yep. And this time I didn't have y'all's character sheets nearly ahead enough, in enough time to put them into the uh, character mancer on roll 20. Uh, like I had wanted to, like Todd did the other night. That was awesome to be able to just click a button. But hopefully if we do this again. Um, yeah, y'all. Uh, actually, Aerith, uh, Air Troll, you, as y'all are going down the road here, y'all see a, y'all hear rather, not see, uh, scuffling to the to the right you 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 hear kind of a uh, help help uh, uh God, help I, 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 is anyone out there uh, help and then you also hear just just growls surrounding surrounding you 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 hear uh just this this cry for help and snarls off to your left. I immediately jump off my horse. Oh, well, hopefully stop the horse. Jump off the horse <laughs> <laughs> and ready my bow. Okay. And of course, look around. <laughs> around hey, you. We have to stop and help that thing. We, I stopped my horse and what's, what's the gnome's name? I'm job. 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 And I uh, pick Job up with me as I hop down and set him down on the ground and ready my I'm boat. I'm you just like throwing him under your arm. <laughs> like that's so sweet. <laughs> that is just sweet. I'm going to give you inspiration. You can use the, You get an advantage on your next roll. I like that. Let's do that. <laughs> Seeing him help Job down, I kind of want to run from the top of my horse onto his horse to get him to help me down. <laughs> yes, let's do that. Do do a let's call that animal handling because you proved your acrobatics. Let's make sure the <laughs> horses like it when you jump on their head. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 don't do too badly. You you make it to his. Uh, it's not you know the graceful Spider Man like you had hoped it would have been, but uh, but you make it into the saddle and uh, you plop down and uh, you're not hurt. The horse just kind of looks back at you. He's like. <laughs> All right, so I'll I'll go and help Lily down if if nobody else is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought he was still on his horse where he let Job down. My bad. <laughs> so so you guys are on here. Reva dismounts as well. Uh, she is a uh, 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 very uh, even though she's a teenager, she is very obviously battle tested. She pulls out her sword and uh, looks around. Um, your immediate area, you see, you see brush, you see rocks, you see a, a kind of of not cobblestone road, but but just rocky, gravelly path in front of you. Uh, there's a clearing a little bit ahead with a larger tree to your left, uh, but that's all you can see. It's just a cursory glance, and you still hear. Hey! Can we all hear that now? Or? I'm sorry, what was that? Can we all hear it, even if we rolled a terrible perception? <laughs> you can all hear it now. I'm, um, I'm... Okay. I was going to say, can I throw a uh, roll a stealth throw to see if I can get closer? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Where's that button at? That's a d20 plus my modifier for stealth. Yep. Plus stealth, or it would be dex if you don't have stealth. I got stealth. Got plenty of stealth. 21. Yeah. You're moving like the shadows right now. You uh, you make sure that it it may be bright under the day the daylight sun of the companion, but you are like a like a ninja just creeping around uh, where you make no sound when you move. As as he's doing that, job is gonna run towards the uh, sound of the person asking for help uh, at top speed, shouting. So top speed for a gnome is what, 25? Yeah, that's right. So you're about right here is where you be. Y'all should be able to move the tokens as well. Oh, uh, you should be able to. Um, 
and this is gridded at five feet each. Uh, the one of them is a little bit wonky at the end because I couldn't line it up because it's me. And uh, but y'all should be able to move your characters around, and uh, you can hold the cursor down to ping somewhere as you want. Um, you hear the sound; it's coming from down here somewhere. Um, but you are definitely, as you move closer, hearing the the sound just get louder and you start hearing more and more growls. The growls are incredibly loud and vicious. Now you're hearing actual barks and snarls. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'm chasing out. after job with my bow at ready. Job shouts out, come at us, monsters! Come attack us! Pick on someone your own size! Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna pull out my... At at that point, uh, as you get there, especially... I'm just gonna call you Air, because both of your names right now start with that. Um, Air, as you get there, you see a... Since you're getting there first and you're stealthy, you can see a giant black wolf in front of you with uh, that's standing at the base of a tree... And uh, up that tree, you can see that there is a uh, a girl, probably 17 years old, maybe 16, 17, 18, just a young, a young adult woman who is up the tree. And she is screaming as the, the wolf is jumping up, trying to bite her uh, out of the tree. She is climbing and scrabbling at it as uh, as much as she can, uh, trying to get away. And that's when you notice that there are three smaller white wolves also surrounding the tree that they decided they're going to have a party, that this is going to be a, a party and they're about to have lunch. Is it time to roll initiative? And it, well, right now, Air Troll has the, uh, has stealth on. So if he wants mm -hmm. to make a sneak attack or anything like that, this would be the time to do it. He can tell y'all uh, if he, if he wants to uh, do anything, it is up to him, and then we will, because he is not yet drawn. You run in screaming, so you yep. probably <laughs> don't get any. Uh, don't get any, no, but he's I'm still... not going to surprise anyone. <laughs> but he is going to surprise someone if he wants to. Um. Yeah, I'll, uh, I will shoot the, the biggest one. Uh, I'll knock an arrow and then shoot it. All right, so uh, roll a roll a twenty and add whatever that weapons modifier is on your uh, on your sheet. Uh, weapons, because I'm not sure where that one, what that one actually is with the with the bow. Uh, I don't know where that one is either. What weapon Maybe is it? It's the longbow. Longbow, uh, level two. What is plus, probably a plus five at least a, let me see see if i can pull this up uh, on your D, D beyond sheet if you have your equipment equipped it'll be in the large box to the bottom right it should show long bow or short bow whichever one you have and then the hit dcs beside it ah uh, okay that's plus seven then cool okay. awesome yeah oh so d20 are... plus seven Apparently, yes. our stream says we're playing Dragon Quest. FYI, yeah, <laughs> we're not. It does that say outside modules. Dragon is part of it. It's very similar. <laughs> uh, and then I also had advantage. No, that was advantage on my twenty-one, but that's fine. Okay, yeah, you you hit him, so that you hit him good. Uh, you the arrow flies through the air and just slaps directly into his rear haunch. You hear? <laughs> and so roll your damage on that one. That would be... D8 plus three. Yes. Wow. Okay, you do 11. Nine damage. Nine damage? Okay. For yep. some reason, I read eight. I heard eight plus three. So you do nine damage. That's a lot. So, so that wolf is he whips around at that. He's looking at the air. He looks at the air. I'm whipping my head around. That was why I went out right then. It's because I was whipping around <laughs> looking like you guys can see me. I was whipping around looking at my haunch at this arrow that, that was launched there. Um, <laughs> but we're not streaming my face this time. Um, but that's what he's doing. He, he turns around at you and 
and you can uh, definitely, definitely uh, tell that uh, he is angry at Air Troll. Uh, the other, the other three wolves are still very interested in going up this tree and trying to eat this, uh, <laughs> eat this, uh, this girl. So uh, they are not doing anything. So everybody else, roll initiative, please. All right. All right. The most classic D and D thing you could possibly it's say. It's a D twenty. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's a D twenty plus Dex and whatever initiative modifiers that you would have. Oh, I didn't do plus Dex. Well, it, actually, if you're looking at D and D Beyond, it's right beside your armor class. Um, on that sheet. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. the plus initiative. Yes. Okay, that is what I did then. Okay, so you and got apparently a I suck. Five, you are. <laughs> You did not do well. You were uh, just waiting to see how the battle goes. Before. Well, I was following That's job. That's exactly it. So. Mm -hmm. 17 for you. Uh, where are we at with the, the wolfies? Oh, the wolfies do good. Was that a five pound D20 card hit your desk? <laughs> it was two metal, uh, two metal D20s, yes. Jeez. Uh, so close to it. it. Did it sound weird? Oh, it, it sounded, sounded like a, loud. It sounded like a hefty thunk. <laughs> yeah. I, I love these things. Like, I didn't realize how much I loved metal dice until I oh, got they're, these. They're amazing. <laughs> they are literally oh, the walking so... dice. Oh, they're so good. Hey, um, have, have you seen the mini metal ones? They're adorable. I have not, but there's a good chance I'll buy them now. Send you pick. Um, Air Troll, what was your, uh, what was your initiative on that? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, plus three with a d20, right? D20? Yes. Uh, uh one. <laughs> uh, Alindia, you get to go before uh, air. <laughs> okay, so, so this is one I'm actually not sure about. This is a rule that I wanted to ask somebody about when it came up. Uh, what actually happens when you roll a one on initiative? Is there Nothing. something bad I can do to them? Nothing. Is there something no. in the rules? Not for initiative. Oh, I was hoping there'd done. be a little bit of something. On, that's a first. That's a first D and D thing. You got to have a critical failure on a technical level. BJ critical fail only counts in spell casting and attacking checks and stuff like that. It, it's not really a thing unless it's part of your kind of your house rule. So you can do uh, whatever. I got gotcha. you. That was one thing that I've been looking into uh, lately was that I didn't realize what actual critical failures were because I didn't know during four and three and four E all that uh, we were playing house rules on it. I had no idea. Um, if you want to add so additional fun, you can uh, Google critical fail chart. <laughs> and it, will, I, I it keeps you from having to regurgitate the same fail every time. Like, I believe I will be doing nice. that. Um, okay, so so we're good to go. The three wolves are are ignoring you at the moment. They are they're doing their thing. Um, so it is going to be Bama's turn first. I will. Oh, Bama rushes in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was trying to send you this quick. I'm going to be attacking with first. It's the it's just a little. Yes, that that one. Yep. Yeah, so. that one would be the closest to you. He is completely ignoring you. It's so quiet. Everybody is We're concentrating. As the <laughs> As We're the holding our breath goes up to the behind the wolf, he he's like, "Oh, that's the most beautiful wolf I've ever seen." <laughs> I, cl I clicked it in. It did not show up. There we go. You hit damage eight. Wow, that wolf goes. <laughs> made this weirdest noise that he couldn't ever make again if he tried, and uh, <laughs> whirls around at you and he goes. Argh! just this weird puppy noise like you hurt this dog That's like i hope you're proud of yourself i absolutely you have hurt am this dog and for my bonus action i'm gonna crack him on his nose with my whip <laughs> <laughs> 
this Why dog not? hates you. <laughs> he he hates you and he is scared of you and he runs away. Oh. Like this dog just bolts. He is just bolting through the forest now. That whip was the last straw. You heard him and there is no bunch that is worth that. He is just it's just done. So <laughs> so now it's a Lindsay's turn <laughs> since uh <laughs> I got me, a, since Todd? You just, yeah, Todd, Todd got to go. a Todd. Oh, Todd got 15. I put you down in the wrong order. Yes, it is Todd. I mixed the 15 and the 5 up. All right. Are, are you aware uh, Roll20 has a built turn tracker? No, I was not. If you look at your bar on the left over there, it's the. I can't see it. Because... Okay, I have moved five squares and I'm going to shout. <laughs> as I attack this guy to my south with my great sword, which for a gnome probably makes it look like I'm about to tip over when I pull it back to swing. <laughs> which the is sword's bigger than you. That is yep. exactly what it is. You look absurd. It is tipping you over. This is how momentum works. It's like this, is, <laughs> like this is an anime sword, sword for me. Yeah. It is. That's what I'm picturing in my head. Totally. Actually, I'm. Oh, the six you is do probably not. a miss. This, uh, this sword. You, you're holding it like you. You're really wanting to to beat this dog, and you, it just fall over backwards. Like just <laughs> the 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 the, the oh. weight of the sword as you lift it up just just puts it off, and you just twirl <laughs> and just don't hit him at all. It is still <laughs> ignoring you, uh, trying to get lunch though. It, it didn't it even is. notice. You're yeah, just, it doesn't even notice. You're, you're tiny. <laughs> so now it's a Lindsay is. Okay, well, I'm sure well. glad I got my turn in so I could do all of that. Nothing. <laughs> oh, unless there was something else that you wanted to do. You can continue moving. No, no. Your... no I'm, I'm just commenting on my, my failure. <laughs> <laughs> Every failure is an attempt to learn. <laughs> oh, I'm wow, very wise. Okay, so I am going to pull out my short bow and shoot that dude right there. Okay. And I don't know what I roll for that, because this thing says I roll a 1d6. Uh, that's your damage. Yeah. Oh, that's damage. 20. Mm -hmm. And then the number that's in there. Yeah. Oh, okay, so plus three. Okay. Oops, slash roll. Sorry, I'm used to just clicking on the little thing, and it automatically does it. Ooh. Yeah. You uh the 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 arrow whips from your short bow and thunks right between the uh the, the wolf's ribs. <laughs> it was jumping at the time and lands on the ground hurt, but looking at you like <laughs> so Aww. roll damage. Okay, so that's where it says 1d6, but then there's also a thing that says I gain plus two bonus for ranged weapons. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so then I do a plus two. Plus two, right? Okay. Yeah, that sounds right. Wow. This, this this dog, I was right about you hitting it in the ribs. You 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 really are. You have Oh, that poor puppy. He is mad at you because you're getting in the way of his lunch. Like he's not running away. This guy's hungry and you're about to be it. Um and so now it's Airwolf's turn. Oh, me? <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. Um, I will put my bow up and pull out my two short swords. Mm. And rush. Let's see, that's one. Don't even, yep. To attack him. All right. So it'll be two... Uh, roll two d20s and uh, for each attack. I'm assuming you have uh, on him, given that he's a ranger with two weapon fighting, don't take a penalty and all that. Um, I have actions in combat, two weapon fighting. Yep, you're good. Okay, cool. So 2d20? Yep. And my... Plus whatever it is on the weapon, yep. probably a, a Plus five. five? What yep. was that? Plus five, plus five on both. Yep. Cool. 
<laughs> that... Wow. That's not right. Yeah, roll them separately okay. like that. I forgot actually that. Well, it'd be, uh, it'd be a 10 and a 19. It'd be a 10 and a 19. You will hit with uh, both of them. Uh, actually, the first one doesn't. The the 19 does. So one of them whips around and like you just miss as you run up because you're moving so quickly at it. But the other one just lands, just slices him across the front paw. Uh, roll your damage for the uh, for the sword that hits. All right, that's a one d eight plus three. Six plus no, it's a one d six plus three. Five. Nice. This this wolf is now uh, very angry with you. He is. And as as it is actually his turn now, uh, he will he will roll a uh, fourteen. Does that hit? What uh, is your what armor I'm... class? Armor class is a fourteen. Ah, so he does hit. <laughs> he doesn't do that much damage. Oh, he does. He hit you for eight. Oof. He just rears back. He sees that second sword and it missed. And you see the glint in this wolf's eyes. He laughs at you in wolf and just claws you across the chest. Just. You specify he laughed in wolf. He laughed yeah. in wolf. I want you. Yes, you have to so realize we did, that. I didn't know what he was doing, though, because I don't speak wolf. Right. <laughs> but those of you who do know, he he wolfed him. He, he, he is angry. <laughs> at the wolfing here. Um, so now it goes back up to the two, Ow. two wolves that are still here. Uh, ha -ha! the one that's angry at Alenzia runs up, rolls a natural 20 as he oh. launches himself, no. at the, <laughs> launches himself at the, this, this ranger and just starts mauling at your face. Um, as I have to pull up what damage he does on this. Do, 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 because I'm the worst DM in the world. Do, 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 do. You're just building suspense. It is. Suspense. Suspense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, uh, oh my. Um, you take, uh, 10 damage from his critical. <laughs> Ouch. And he is. Ouch. Okay. He's very angry. And so now it is back to being Bama's turn. And I am watching these wolves tear into our party, and I'm just going to run up to just attack Legolita and swing with a rapier. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's only you did not hit that. You, you, you come on strong like I, I would expect from you. I appreciate the attempt. Oh, I'm still going to crack him in the <laughs> that's a night you, yes Ooh. that uh yeah. that that wolf is actually as you slap it on this is the weirdest thing you've ever seen happen with this with this whip the whip that you slap at his head wraps around its neck and you hear <laughs> and the wolf just falls over with the whip wrapped around its neck oh. yay good job thank you you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> um so now it's going to be uh, the, it's the, I can't remember the word wolf, you guys. That's what just happened. Uh, it's going to be the wolf uh, who is beside uh, tiny little no man job. And uh, he's going to turn around and go like, actually, no, nah, he doesn't. He, he didn't notice that you were there last time because I forget oh. things. And he's still <laughs> wanting lunch. He's still <laughs> trying he to leave. He doesn't even know that. there. Nope, he doesn't. He's just trying to jump up that tree. He just hey, moves over. He's like, just hey, <laughs> jerk dog. That's all he's focused on. So now it goes back up to uh, to Todd there. It goes back to job. All right. Uh, oh, and before I take my turn, I want to say we just received our first donation for Extra Life. Woo! Fantastic! Woo! Yeah. Every, everybody awesome. watching the stream, go Thank scroll you. down and click on that donate button for Extra Life. We are raising money for charity or something, I guess, right? It's true. All, we all are. money goes to children's hospitals. 
It does. This does not go to us in any way. This is for the Children's Miracle Network through Extra Life. Uh, we want to be able to uh, save the kids, unlike the puppies that uh, Bama scares away. Uh, we want to save the kids. No, We're that, it's great. Thank you guys for so much. Children. That's true. Screaming puppies for children. That's our new motto. And, <laughs> and next week we'll be raising uh, money for PETA. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be hurting children to raise right. money for Graham. <laughs> It, it will actually be to pay the fine PETA imposes on us. But... <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. So, Job, uh, I guess I'm going to use my movement to stand up. And I'm still close enough. So, uh, Job is again going to shout, it, and swing at the, the wolf. 15. Your your giant sword this time cracks it straight in the haunch. Like you come down with just fury, just and your tiny gnome lifts up off of the ground as the top <laughs> the top of your great sword hits it, and uh, good for rolling damage. Yeah, you you see me now, don't you? <laughs> okay. Spence. It is. It's done, done. Nine. Done. Nine this, butt damage. You, the butt damage <laughs> that you did to this wolf is, is intense. He is, he is hurt. You, he is actually sitting on the ground in front of you, whimpering now. He's, oh, poor puppy. <laughs> it's a wolf that was going to eat a person. Everybody calm down. <laughs> But he sounds so sad. And he well, won't stop. He is continuing to whimper through all of the rest of this. Is he scooting his injured butt across the ground now? Not yet. He is just sitting there, whimpering, staring at the gnome. Like, he is giving the biggest wolfish puppy dog eyes that he can. Uh, so, uh, as he sits there and whimpers, um, the... <laughs> Oh my god. The the big black uh wolf that was attacking uh air was and then it just looks at his friend, sees over that uh that the little white wolf got injured, and it's like and he just and he runs over, grabs the white wolf by the by the nap of the neck and pulls it away like a mommy wolf just taking her kid away and the wolves are completely gone now with the one dead corpse and these having run away because that one rolled a one and was about dead. And you guys have now completed the encounter. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Miss up in the tree. You're safe now. You can come down. Oh, are all the wolves gone? Are they gone? Are all of them gone? I still see They're one. It's over there. It's by the elf. Oh, it's dead. The only, the, the, the only, the only good wolf is a dead wolf. <laughs> she climbs down the the tree and uh, just kind of shakily stands there and and thanks you. She says, "Thank you. I, uh, I, I, I'm Grace. Thank you for thank you for saving me." Are you okay, hey, Grace? Uh, what, uh, let me ask you just a uh, quick question here, Grace. Hi, I'm I'm Joe from the uh, uh, Order of the Gauntlet. Uh, yay, go justice! Now, we just hurt uh, what some people would call puppies. What I call vicious hell wolves. Um, they, 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 they're but, hell wolves. They are certainly hell wolves. They were trying to eat me. Right, right. So, in the overall morality and ethics of the situation, do you feel like we were justified in saving your life by attacking yes. them? Yes, very okay. much so. I, I very much appreciate that. I don't care that that dog is dead. I hate to cut in, but while they're talking about this, I'm in the background <laughs> skinning the pelt off the baby wolf. Uh, well, she... I'm looking to see if I can recover my arrow. Yes, absolutely. I'll let you do that. Even it ran away. It plunked off that. Take it. Uh, um, you absolutely uh, start skinning the wolf and she moves over to you uh, past uh, Alinzia and says, that's thank you. Thank you so much. That's what needs to be done to that wolf. I, I really, truly appreciate it. Um, could, could you happen to spare um, when, when you sell the, uh, the, 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 the pelt, could you, maybe maybe share with me i'm i've been collecting gold and and the wolves they they 
Oh, I'm so, I'm so scared. What What are you collecting gold for? I uh, I can't I can't afford uh roll enrolling in an academy. I, I'm trying to join the academy. I need to, I, I I promised my sister that that I would that I would go to school that I would make something out of my life and she. The last thing I have is this scarf, and I don't have anything that can pay that can pay to t- take me to school. And and I just, I would like to make that's an what I was here check. for. Yeah, absolutely. She seems like she's telling the truth to you. Uh, you can't you can't tell anything uh, is off. <clears throat> she seems scared and shaky uh, while she's talking about this, um, but she. She can't, uh, you don't hear anything. Like, you don't feel like she's trying to pull your leg. I reach like, she's trying to take advantage yeah, of I, you. I reach in my teeny tiny coin pouch, and I, I pull out a gold, and I, I hand it to her. And I hold it in her hand, and here, education is very important, especially for us ladies. Uh, uh, you, a gold? You, 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 oh my god. She, she grabs the gold and she clutches it that that she is clutching this gold coin like 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 she has never seen anything like it and there's a good chance that she hasn't uh she she holds on to it and as she's holding it in her hand she reaches to her she reaches up to her scarf and at the very edge the frayed edge of it she pulls out one thread and she hands it to you uh and says when when i come a famous scholar bring me that bring that back to me i will pay you back for this i will give you any free lesson that you want i promise that i will not forget this i will dedicate every last moment to this my sister would love you and she reaches around and just gives you the biggest hug that you might have ever had like you're tiny and she's a human but and so she is manhandling you but it is the <laughs> most loving hug you have ever felt in your life yeah, i want to also give her a give her a gold not a hug <laughs> i want to also give her a gold and and Miss, you don't need to give me any thread of your scarf or anything. I just want to help. She she I, says, no, 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 something. I may be asking for help. I may have been asking for help when the wolves came, but I, I have to give something. And she hands you a, a purple thread from the rainbow scarf that she wears around her neck. Oh, Yours I'm, is uh, uh, green. I'm absolutely well. tying it around my finger. Wonderful. I too would like to assist with your student loans. <laughs> she, she, she actually collapses at this point. Just, just falls to her to her knees and looks at you and just holds on to to these gold these gold coins that you've given. And she, she can't believe it. She's, I, I don't, you, I, you don't know what difference you've made. You have no idea what what you've done. And she starts to cry and hands you a piece of of red thread from her from her scarf and says gives you the same the same advice, the same offer that she's made the others. And I will give her two gold pieces. She just bursts into tears. She she has She's not gonna have any scarf left. She she oh it is a very large thick scarf it is and uh, she she is just crying uncontrollably sobbing thanking you telling you that you've changed her life and that you have no idea what this means to her and and her family. Hey hey air air person are you gonna help? <sighs> yeah here and I flip a coin to her. <laughs> As I walk past, I feel like a she, copper. She, re- <laughs> she she looks at the she grabs it out of the air. The reflexes that this uh, that this girl has are insane. Like she's reached <laughs> for coins in the air before, and she looks. At, Thank you for your copper, sir. And and clutches it to her chest. And Riva, the the Hell Rider who's come with you. It's like enough of this. Let's go. I don't know why she sounds like that, but she does. 
Well, and she's that mad. That, she yeah. She's mad. She's like, I don't care about all of this. We're going to go. Come on. Let's get out of here. We have something to do. I'm glad that they saved you, little girl, but we have to go. And by little girl, I want you guys to remember that they're the same age. Um, <laughs> the Grace seriously sits there sobbing. And as she is, uh, is sobbing and you guys are uh, leaving, um, she she says, I, I don't. I I don't even make a gold ear. And she's just sobbing, saying that that you she doesn't know what to do with this much money, that she's gonna dedicate everything she can to her studies, and uh then goes immediately back running like full bore back into uh Elturel, where she is just completely gone from sight as quickly Hi. as as you can. Um but yeah, the the young girl doesn't even make one gold per year, and she has just come into a fortune. So you guys should all feel absolutely fantastic about this. Um, and that is why and, everyone should donate money to the children's hospitals. It is. That is exactly you know what, why you what should else? donate money to the children's <laughs> hospitals. Uh, the adventure was about another donation came in. Whoa! Thank you so very much. Apparently, um, Air Trolls number one fan gave us twenty five bucks. So I well, gave extra life twenty five bucks. That is fantastic. Thank you, Air Trolls number one hey. fan. Air Troll, you have just been invited Shade back for round two. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for riding my way back, guys. Uh, Reva looks at you guys as you're going and says, "Enough of the money. Get your horses and let's go." Because her voice changes every time she says something. <laughs> And it's the strangest thing that you guys have ever seen out of another human being. And you don't know how it's possible for anyone to do that at any given time. I, I look over to Aerith as I'm trying to get him to help me back on my horse again. And, and I just kind of mock her. <laughs> A little help. Reva failed the... So I reached the, down uh, for uh, Lily Haversnatch and... It's him up on the, uh Sm <laughs> snack oh whoops <laughs> it's a family it's a family thing hey north carolina education here it's true uh i reach yes. down and help him up on the uh, up on his horse and turn around and grab job and help him up onto the horse as i get on behind him and we yep. take off with no trouble whatsoever the wolves are gone the day is clear the companion's light makes you feel just delightful after this you you should feel wonderful about yourself for donating to 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 donating to this girl's education and to the children's medical i can't even say i messed it up i screwed it up <laughs> and to the children's miracle network huh uh, but you, uh, as you move uh, forward down the road, you come to where uh, there is now a uh, a stream that you're finding. There is you're probably gonna have to zoom out from what it looks like here. Um, thank you. Somebody else just donated yeah. as we came in. Uh, Air trolls Appreciate actual it, guys. something. <laughs> Air trolls actual number one fan just gave us twenty five dollars and a penny. So wow. take that, Air Trolls number one fan. <laughs> yeah. We really appreciate that. Uh, this right. is the kind keep of... Keep it coming, guys. Keep it coming. Yeah, keep that coming a lot. Uh, Y'all, if you keep on and on doing this, uh, where you, you want to uh, donate more... Keep one more up in each more, other. Keep one up in <laughs> each other. I will make sure to have really awful things happen to Air Troll the entire time during the next little bit. I'm already already down to 12 hit points man like what what worse could happen i would uh at, at, i would not ask true, i question. probably should heal i'm like down to eight yeah this is a good time you're at a stream this would be a good time if y'all wanted to take a short rest and uh roll hit die get your uh roll a hit die or two uh get your hit points back anything like that you would be okay perfectly yeah fine. i i definitely need to do that so what do i roll for that uh there Same. should there should be underneath your hit points uh, on the D&D Beyond character sheet. It should actually say hit oh, dice. Oh, 2D10. Okay. Um, now, what you can do is there's actually, it's really cool. This is the reason I like D&D Beyond. Please sponsor us. Uh, you can click short rest and select the number of hit, die that, hit dice that you want to use. And it will roll those counted as a short rest and uh, add those to your hit points again. It's super cool. He says because he uses it, not because he's sponsored by them, but 
Please. Well, I am just going off of a PDF sheet of i mean i did it from D and beyond but and yeah wherever it is uh on yeah. there it'll be like what'd you say 1d10 2d10 2d10 then yeah you that's what you if you don't well, you need could, you could you use just need, one of them yeah, right if you now don't need both of them. oh okay well then can i just say i'm just list, taking one right? of the yeah, eight you, since they were both yeah. eight oh, okay yeah 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 so i forgot i that was thank you bama okay then i'm just doing one of the eights I get a D10 plus two. Oh, wow. And I get four. That's half back. The companion's light shines above you, and you feel as though maybe the the health that you get back from resting was doubled from what it rolled on the hit die. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, Ooh. hell, ye benevolent D. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all about to get in some crap. <laughs> um, I will take beware the, the benevolent then. DM. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, but as you as you move onward, the the area that you're resting in is is really just picturesque. This golden sun, this companion has absurdly made this look like the like a Thomas Kincaid photo, like Thomas Kincaid painting. Like it you're it looks like nothing you've ever seen in the real world. Um you uh do have heard actually everybody make a uh, history check right now. Just roll a D20 and add intelligence. Ten. You're not a very intelligent. Uh, two of you are smart <laughs> enough, though. Uh, Air and Alenzia remember that they have heard uh, a legend. It, it, it's just right at the back of their heads that uh, a, an evil, like a druid conclave, used to use this part of the woods or somewhere around here uh, for rituals for human sacrifice. Um, it's, it's a, you've heard that, that maybe they involved, uh, uh, different kinds of ritual killings and you heard legends oh. of uh, even giant owls. Real quick. Yeah. Thanks again for the, uh, the $50 donation from, uh, from the wife. Oh, wow. Fantastic. That, that is puts awesome. 105 of 120. Ooh, that would be Air Troll's uh -huh. real number one fan. <laughs> no, no, number one fan and number one fan ball and chain are the same. So she's at 75. <laughs> That's that fantastic. is wonderful. Good job. You guys Thank are you. awesome. Like I I make a lot of jokes, but that's that's fantastic. Thank you. Like I I know a lot of the times when I <laughs> I've been told that when I sound sincere, I sound like I'm being sarcastic, but thank you so <laughs> so much. I mean it. Like that's yeah, that's, this really is for a wonderful, wonderful cause. Uh oh, new one. Air Troll's uncle is no. twice removed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, y'all got me. You got me with the uncle twice <laughs> removed because I don't even know how to do that. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, as a small tangent as we're doing this, my wife has had to tell me how to do that that what i consider first cousin second cousin third cousin stuff like that actually isn't that it's like always like first cousin twice removed or something and she has had to explain this to me every year since we've been married and we've been married 11 years and i still don't understand how it how it works and i'm no oh, i have no idea i'm an intelligent human being i know that that's something that i can't wrap my mind around so i just keep saying my second cousin instead of first cousin once removed <laughs> Well, just really quick though, I wanted to point out that we are only four dollars and ninety nine cents away from the goal of one twenty. <laughs> that is true. Um, so, Air Troll, keep it going. <laughs> hey, yeah. Air Troll, uh, do do keep something, do something funny, <laughs> do, do do something all sexy. Hey, now, <laughs> don't uh, tell me what a good time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to donate the extra four ninety nine. That is, you guys are fantastic. Like for real, I I. I didn't know what to expect. And this is, this is just wonderful. You're, you're fantastic human beings, all of you. Um, so 
going back in, we uh, you know that that there you feel the two of you, Air and Alenzia, remember that there was an like some sort of druid conclave that used this to do uh, human sacrifice in some in the woods north of uh, north of Elturel. and you you seem to recall you're not a hundred percent sure um, that that maybe they included like somehow owls or bears or owl bears. Uh, but somehow like you remember that as just being kind of a tertiary, like part of the legends that you don't even recall, but it's just kind of there. Like when you think about druids, you think about owl bears. So you two know that the rest of the party does not. Um, so okay. as, as you're going, uh, and you feel free to tell them, do all your things as you want. Um, the yeah, path as we're is, writing, I, I want to just kind of share the story. So that they know it. Okay. And I just, just kind of grunt like I have nothing else to add. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Raya, Rava, the, uh, the ever-changing, looks back and is like, <laughs> yeah, what'd you think? Every, uh, what do you think we're looking for, guys? Uh, we're, lo we're, look we're looking for cartoon mice, huh? And uh, <laughs> she, uh, she just turns around and walks further up the walks further up the uh the path uh and crosses we're still on horseback right yes well actually you you should be across y'all were resting if you like resting on horseback i don't care oh well yeah i guess that's true everybody's everybody's got their own thing uh everybody's got we something resting. <laughs> um she's continuing just to move forward whether y'all are, are going to continue resting or not you see her kneel to the ground and uh just start looking at twigs and sticks and and kind of poking her fingers in the mud and uh she's like i don't know what i'm doing uh can anybody track can anybody track this i uh, i i don't i think i, I lost tracking uh, let's see what am i Pretty sure I have tracking something to do with tracking. You see Reva standing there still as you're as you're looking around at the the tracks, trying to figure out what you see. Reva is just splashing water onto the onto the trail and kind of smoothing it out again and poking it again. And she says, "I think I found something." Good job. What'd you find? <laughs> My finger. <laughs> Yeah, I I guess I don't have tracking because I'm not seeing it here. If Let's anybody, uh, it should be actually you should be able to uh roll survival. Oh no, um, I have natural uh, explorer that has something to do with tracking. For your favorite, uh, what was your favorite terrain? I don't know. Oh, Arctic. <laughs> this isn't Arctic. Arctic. This is not Arctic. <laughs> Arctic will not. I don't think not save you here, lass. Yeah, yeah. Once again, I don't know why I use the voices I use sometimes. <laughs> well, that's just, that's because just you don't have the right mic. That just makes a proficiency bonus double. Yeah. Um, okay. so you said it's survival for tracks. Yeah. So you two rangers roll survival uh, with advantage, okay. actually, uh, because you have right. Gideon's blessing, and you are in your in your moment here. This is where you succeed. Like this is where you not succeed, but thrive. Okay, so 1d20 plus survival. Uh, yeah, plus survival. And then what would it be for the advantage? Uh, you just, just roll, roll, two, you roll it twice. That's to uh, roll a second d20. Oh, okay. And do the same thing. You take the higher of the two. Okay, well, there's one. Then. Sorry if you can hear my typing. All right. So, Alenzia... You notice that uh, there are five distinct humanoid footprints on the path that you can see these footprints clear as day and Reva is still sitting over there poking in the mud. Uh, you do the same thing, uh, Air. You see these footprints. Uh, they're probably several hours old and they go uh, further, deeper into the woods uh, directly north of you. Um, you also notice, uh, Alenzia and Air, that uh, there is a small tributary to the creek um, that is is going up along the uh, this. Actually, this is where the first one was. The tracks lead over this direction, um, and the tributary, like you're, you see water running up this way. Um, 
the map doesn't show that because I didn't draw it in. Um, but uh, that's where it is. Um, hold on. What? Nope, that's the wrong shape. That's going to be some weird water. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that, y'all. Look at that water going in there. See, it looks that. like ice, hence Arctic. Oh, boy. So, <laughs> you know, I prepared. Look at that water there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, look at that DM as God. Ooh, I made a river. Um, <laughs> you 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 notice that there's a tributary leading up in that direction, um, and uh, uh, air you learn and Alinzia does not that there are three uh -huh. sets of of humanoid footprints that are alongside that hidden creek. Um, they're fresh. They've been made within the last two hours. Where the old, the other ones off to the left were about five hours old over here. Uh, the <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't know who's drawing that, but thank you for drawing the recent footstep. <laughs> um, but those are far more recent. But they are going in different directions here. Um, okay. along that way. Um, humanoids are my favorite enemy. Is there any way, any role I can do to uh, see if I can determine what kind of footprints they are? Uh, yes, you uh, actually roll uh, insight with uh, with that. There may be something in your favorite enemy. I haven't read favorite enemy, that one about the ranger. In a uh, bit. Do y'all remember? It gives me a, it lets me learn an extra language and uh, advantage on survival checks to track, as well as intelligence checks to recall information about. Yeah, for sure. Then uh, that will definitely come into play. Do so, in, insight for now. Mm -hmm. Do insight uh, to to figure out what tracking and uh, what information you know, because that's an intelligence mm -hmm. check. Seventeen. Yes. Um. What you notice about these, as BJ changes his view to tell you, um, is that you see. Well, oh, crap. One second. Yeah. Um, you see a dragonborn, a couple of dragonborn uh, footprints going up that way. Um, you can't tell how many there are. There might be up to three uh, dragonborn leading that way and probably some light humanoid. It could be an elf, a half elf. Um, but you are absolutely sure from the, the weight and the size that there are uh, three dragonborn uh, going up the, that have gone up the path and uh, at least one light humanoid of some kind. Um, I kind of shift in my seat a little bit and holler up to, uh, what's her name? Rhea? And uh, let her know what I've uh, discovered. Whoop, that, uh, that would make sense. They're the cult of the dragon. Uh, this is, uh, gonna be, this is gonna be fun. Uh, What's there. Roda? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so, so, you know, she stands up at this point and is, uh, and doesn't really have an opinion on which way to go. She's like, if they're going everywhere, we can we can go whichever way you guys want. Uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to stop them one way or another, and we know that they're here. Uh, so you guys, you guys just pick. Okay. Well, is anyone able to track? Like, Air, can you are you able to track them? Um, the ones that you the closest ones they'll both take you up there just as a, as an out of character dm advice they'll oh, both okay. take you up there uh to different uh areas within the next part uh just depending on which one you go first on that one the one to the right here is more um is more fresh and these uh have the people have been active longer there was uh that's more light uh humanoids that way uh, I mean, I've got a, I've got the tracks in sight. I mean, I can, I've, we can go either way, and I can track them. Yep. I would say if the ones to the right look fresher, let's go to the right. All right. Does Anyone everybody disagree? Agree? Well, that sounds good. Reva is like, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't care at this point, you guys. I was put here as a way to help lower level characters, and there's a lot of you, so uh, so I just sit here and <laughs> sound funny sometimes. I uh, 
I don't really know why they included me for, for a group, <laughs> whatever. Uh, anyway, let's go. And, uh, and you go up <laughs> to the uh, thing. I'm, I'm actually changing the, uh, the view right now, so y'all uh, may get a black screen as the fog is uh, put on. Um, oh, no, look out for this black fog. <laughs> I attack the darkness. <laughs> um, man really y'all quick. i found that again the other day and uh i i 100 thought it was the funniest thing i've seen in so long <laughs> like like i cannot like tell you how much i love the i attack the darkness and it's by the cheetos like that holds up like there's a lot of stuff that doesn't hold up from the early 2000s when it comes to internet stuff but y'all <laughs> that one does uh, um to turn to turn us back to the adventure zone lily rushes in <laughs> Taco. Um, I gotta find the reveal thing. I had the reveal, and now I don't have reveal. So you guys come up in into this area right here. I have to grab your uh, tokens here because I didn't know where you would be going, and so I didn't know where you would be. And um, the problem with open world games, you know, it is. <laughs> My number one uh, fan just topped our goal off. Holy cow, oh, you guys are awesome. Oh, that's wonderful. Whoop, whoop. I was looking at a different screen and you guys like won the game as I did it. So thank you. Game over. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I guess it's, it's just, just because we both. We're, we're done now, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, more money. Let's give more money to the children. Um, so you guys are coming up up this way and I don't have them positioned terribly well because of the uh because of the uh uh fog of war right now. But um as you guys come up the the valley here, as you come up the the tributary, you you see that mm. a a cultist is standing in the center of the of the 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 creek i guess um it's a you you see stones all around you uh that that look like they were probably part of a druidic circle uh based on the legend that you guys knew and told everyone um the this this cultist is screaming as she's doing this it is a a dragon uh a dragonborn cultist who is holding a body by the neck underwater and screaming in in infernal uh and looking up at the sky looking down and just screaming like i can't i can't do this kind of scream uh and uh there is a so body do we think she's friendly uh <laughs> she looks incredibly friendly um nice. based on based on some of my past relationships and friendships <laughs> this, this one is a very very nice woman and i think that you could start a life with her um, and as my proposal gift i would like to shoot her with a crossbow <laughs> that that is fair one thing before you do though hmm? there is another body uh to the far uh to the far right that is that is very obviously dead and smashed against the are these um, the bodies yes these are are the bodies okay. uh, that are there uh this one has been smashed against a, the ritual stone that you can see from very far away that that has been mutilated and she is holding this one uh with actually her back is turned to you i just couldn't do that with the token and um drowning like drowning this one so yes, now you uh, you do your thing. Fire! Yeah, I I think we're ready to attack unless ever, yeah. anyone wants to try talking sure. to her. As, the, <laughs> as I hear the whip of the crossbow, I pull myself and job off the uh, we hop off the horse and Oof. I pull my bow out from horseback a sixteen. Yeah. Oh yeah, so uh, so you smack her or. Uh, she actually, no, did you say 16? Yes. No, sorry. That does not hit. Oh, uh, the, the, sorry. I actually looked at the, uh, the wrong enemy. No, that does not hit her. She, the, the, the arrow, the bolt go, just goes right up to her. And as it approaches her other arm, that is not grabbing on to the, uh, not holding the person down into the water 
flips a shield out and deflects it without even looking at you and continues this screaming. Uh, and you can hear every once in a while the word Bane over and over again. About every fifth word, it's Bane. 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 Um, all right. Well, should we roll I, initiative or it, just keep does shooting? Does anybody have a Does anybody have a high religion modifier? No. Maybe we can figure out what this bane is. I have a two for religion. Or if anybody speaks uh, infernal, you can understand her as well. Oh, took Elvish as my extra language. I think. Then yeah, roll religion if you want to. You still might be able to get it. It shouldn't be. Okay, I know thing. infernal. Oh, oh, you do know speak infernal. infernal. Yes. Uh, you. you hear her uh, saying, uh, "Bane, oh god of tyranny, take this soul uh, to power the the destruction of the companion. Take this uh, this soul. I'm offering this soul to you, oh Bane, god of tyranny. Be take this soul and include it in the army." And uh, she's repeating this kind of thing over and over and over again. It sounds nice. She's 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 a she's a delight. Sakura, um, I just saw that in chat. No. No. <laughs> my finger at no. Uh, but yeah, oh, so boy. so she is she knows you're there, but she doesn't care. She doesn't care. Like she is very wrapped up in this. What she's doing is more important. So you can still get off a So is a, this body alive then? Uh, you can't tell at this range. Okay. You can't tell if uh, if the body she's holding yeah, under no, the water a comes up. crossbones on it. So yeah, that means it's dead. Then yes, it's <laughs> dead. Uh, I forgot that I put that on there. Thanks, Todd. Well, um, <laughs> you did. Todd, it. You take seven damage as you fall off your horse. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no. The uh, yes, it is. It is very much dead already. But she is. I hate to say it this way. She is going to town on it still. Okay, well, so you know you what? I'm going to pull out my short bow and shoot her. All right, do that. Yes. <laughs> That's my favorite part about the. <laughs> <laughs> that is that, my favorite sound to make. That in Katie's I final key, hit. That in Katie's Again. final Keanu. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that is a great one. Katie and Keanu just makes me so happy. Um, so she once again whips this, uh, whips the uh, shield up, blocks your uh, your bolt, and goes right back to praising Bane. Well, Anybody like else want to do anything before she in, before she uh, no, decides to take uh, take action? Well, I'll uh, if if somebody sets me on the ground, I'll run towards her. I did when Bama uh, okay. shot the yeah. crossbow. Okay, great. Well, I don't have a range weapon, but I, I will run up on her. And I'll if I can if I can do it as a surprise round, I'll go ahead and attack with my great sword. Go ahead and do it as a as a great sword, yeah. Do it. Yeah. For the gauntlet. Oh yeah. Nice. So you're you run at her. You it, it's amazing that your little form can hold this this sword. <laughs> We're all still amazed at this. Uh, even the voice from the heavens watching down is amazed that this gnome can hold <laughs> the sword this big. And as you run at her, you leap off of the dead body's head uh, because it's the only leverage that you can find. You flip around and twist and just smash her in the head. Uh, with your sword, uh, you hear a clang, but she is n her body is knocked off of the uh, the body as it's drowned, and uh, that she's drowning and uh, very obviously knocked to the uh, to the side of the of the river. Ooh. So, what damage does the uh, what is that one d ten plus three? Well, it's two d six plus one normally, but I believe since it's a uh... A crit, it'll be 46 plus 2. 46? How do you get 46 from 2d6? Because D6. on a crit, you roll double the oh. damage. I always do it as just double damage straight up, but cool if you want to do that. 
Oh, well, I mean, you're the GM. We're, we're in your house. So you tell like, me. 46? My God, man. <laughs> no, no. 4D6, <laughs> not 46. Yeah, go ahead and do that. <laughs> okay. I like rolling dice. Like, let, I, I'm just like, let's do that then. 18. Oof. Bam! Damn. She is knocked down. Like, when I said you knocked her down from the head, like, you knocked her, her head slammed into the back of a, of one of the, the druid stones, and is just, she is stunned. She, she's not moving. She's breathing, and just kind of muttering under her breath, Bane, save me, Bane. <gasps> Your dark gods cannot save you from the justice of the gauntlet. <laughs> that is what you did. Yes. <laughs> so she is not moving right now. There is no retaliatory action. Is there anything the rest of you want to do before? I think you could probably take her out or do whatever you want to with her. Um, well, I mean, I'll, you want to yeah. try to interrogate her? I'll, I'll, uh... What would interrogation be under investigation or intimidation? Intimidation. That'd be in intimidation, yeah. I don't have any... Uh, I have I'll plus two in intimidation, and I speak infernal. <laughs> that would probably... Yeah. That would help. No, yeah, I'd say you go for it. I mean, oh, yeah. I've just... I've got a, a arrow trained owner ready DJ, to let it is go. Is she conscious enough that I could talk to her? Or when you say she's like stunned, is she? She like... is muttering to herself. She is. Her head is lolling back and forth. Her eyes are open, just kind of <sighs> like she's hurt and injured, and she can have a conversation. But all she's doing is still praying to her god. Okay, well, I am gonna roll intimidation then, if I can figure out how. Uh, on here you should be able to just do uh, that in charisma. Plus, yeah, or whatever it is. A, you should have an intimidation on your Yeah, there's skill an intimidation list. skill. Yeah, I have a plus two, so is it roll 20, 20, 20, 20 plus, plus two? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. So what do you say? Then, in Infernal, I, I am going to say to her very intimidatingly, <laughs> Tell us what you're doing. What what is your plan? And how many of you are there? <laughs> Her head lolls to the side. She looks up at you. She is it is pained to move her head. You can see that there's there's consciousness there, but she is not who she was five minutes ago. And she just looks at you and says, I'll have your soul like you will have all of Eltro. <sighs> Sorry, crazy lady, but that doesn't answer my question. What, I'm what are you? Not what are you doing? Afraid of you? <laughs> I answer only to Bane. Okay, well then I will help you go see Bane, and I pull out my mm. short bow. <laughs> Fair enough. Good smack talk. <laughs> Yeah, do that with advantage. So is that twice then? Yeah, roll d20 twice. Okay. Because she's down, she's prone, like she's dead. I just want to see the big numbers. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 y'all. You got that either way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take all of it. Uh, with her on the ground, like I was going with the 10, not even AC on this one. It was just like she's lying down dead. Uh so your short bow just straight up knocks her head back. And I did it again. Y'all can't see me. Knocks her head back. I knocked the headphones <laughs> off of my head. Like I was about to say her hood went. Uh, hits the druidic stone. Uh, you hear a sick. Just, and then nothing. It's Hope just... y'all didn't have any more questions for her. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I am going to roll a perception check just for uh, general awareness of the surroundings to make sure there's nothing else or uh, to check the body as well. Absolutely. Um, around you, you actually see, oh, excuse me. You actually see three different paths 
leading uh leading further into the forest you see two to the north and uh one to the uh, to the west um you see that the two bodies uh, are freshly dead that there's blood still coming off of the one to the north uh its head has been ironically smashed against the druidic circle stone uh like her like the uh bolt from alinzia's crossbow crossbow uh made hers do and the drowned body is unmoving and sinking uh you find on the corpse uh she is wearing chain mail it is an entire suit of chain mail uh she's carrying a shield and both of them uh are emblazoned with the symbol of the god bane uh, that you are free to undress her and take if you wish. I don't need it. Anybody need some chain mail? Or a shield? I would, I would or not a shield or anything with that. I wouldn't, yeah, I, already I wouldn't chain, do chain. So I couldn't wear it. So. I could take a shield. Just, it is a very pretty shield. I will. Like shield. It's got that symbol of Bane on it, though. That's kind of... Okay. Well... It is telling. I'm adding it to my um, inventory equipment. All right. Write down one cursed shield. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you do have a shield of Bane. Okay. Uh, shield of that, How I'm much does it weigh, or do I need to worry about weight? I don't worry about encumbrance. Inventory management okay. is the least fun thing in the world to me. Okay. Sorry about those of awesome. you who are listening and love inventory management. For inventory management, see other D and D stream, not this one. Well, should maybe we, if we maybe raise take enough the chain money mail. for charity, <laughs> should we well, take the chain the mail then to sell it? I was about to say, if that's the case, I'll hop down and grab all. the chain mail. Okay. They feel very light because you don't. You're not encumbered by them at all. <laughs> it's, it's like magic. Um. The uh, the shield will give you plus one to uh, AC when uh, additionally to just whatever uh, the normal, uh, not buckler, but just base shield will, okay. will give you. Um, the chain mail is emblazoned with it um, <laughs> and uh, uh, it is cultist attire, but there's you don't know if there's anything special with it yet. Um, but yeah, there are the two things up here uh and the uh the path to the to the left thank you for drawing on there whomever did that <laughs> okay so where where does everyone want to go and what happened to the ever-changing girl she changed <laughs> i'm not did sure she change into this cultist no, wrong people um Whoa, little ring around. <laughs> Wait, which one is the real It's my Bama? evil twin. <laughs> it is. Shh, shh. You saw nothing. <laughs> shh. <laughs> she is hanging out behind you and uh, just doing her own thing, poking at the mud still, because she is realizing she is not needed in this adventure. <laughs> she can I'm going like, back at her over my shoulder. Hi, y'all, kinda, I'm going home. kind of at her. <laughs> she is... Uh, She's happy at this point to have someone be able to do this job. She, she's she been sent out to these battles a lot in the past and is very glad not to have to deal with it right now. So, what... I think we're you... going to straight north this way. Going north? Yeah, it keeps us out of the river, unless we're trying to hide our tracks. I don't know, whatever y'all are. Hiding our tracks in the river. I don't think with Job here that we need to worry about hiding our tracks the way that he just dove in at those wolves. <laughs> tiny, tiny man's syndrome. <laughs> but hey, who are you calling tiny? <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, uh... then let's go north. Sounds All right. Good to me. So All as right. you, which one of those are you taking north? No, that one. This one. Okay. Cool. 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 Uh, you approach the uh, the exit of your. This is just a a bramble of brush. It's a path, but it's it's been qu easily uh, cleared. It's it's just 
rough terrain, but not not hard to get through. It's like when you're going hiking and the the, the trail has grown over a little bit too much. Uh, that's really what you're what you're seeing here. Um, beyond the uh, once you get out of that ahead of you, you start to see a problem. Uh, this is where the dragonborn were uh, that you tracked earlier. This is where they where they got off to. Um, this is in the center of the uh, the the where the creek has kind of pulled here in the center. Um, you see that there is a large stone altar uh, with a semi conscious man on it, uh, wearing armor, wearing green armor. Uh, not someone who is responding very well. They are in about the same shape that the uh, that the cultist was before. Uh, you see directly in front of you a uh, a dragonborn guard, um, in in hooded in robes, and uh, a further one to the guarding the other okay, path. So these ones are the dragonborn. The, yes, um, and you see a. Let me see what it's called. A uh, male human trying to interrogate the uh, the person like you did. Actually, it's a very similar sight to what you did to that cultist. Uh, I didn't the, end well. The white haired uh, NPC is is trying to na navigate, uh, interrogate the uh, the person on the altar, and uh, as you. So that's what you see as you as you enter the the grove. Okay, well, mm -hmm. I would like to do just yeah. a general perception check to see if there's like anything else around like in the bushes or anything that we need to be aware of. Uh not here. Okay. Uh the bushes are Don't need to worry about that. Nope, you don't hear any kind of just just in general. You don't even have to roll for it. Uh, okay. You don't hear anything in uh, in the in the bushes. No kind of no kind of dangerous animals. You don't you don't hear uh, trampling bear or anything coming toward you. Uh, you notice that the that the water itself is about three foot deep around them, and the dragonborn are guarding uh, the How water. How tall the is Job? To the water. <laughs> Oh, three oh. feet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about, very uh, um, balanced. I can hop same. off the uh, horse and throw a stealth check to see if I can maybe get up here. Well, how do you show? Like, how do you mark? Oh, there, there you go. Get up yeah, there behind those cool. rocks. Yeah, roll to, stealth. Uh... All right, that's uh, plus five. Glad, kind of like to do that too. That's my stealth roll. Okay, you you beat what uh, you beat the eighteen that I needed to get you to to stealth away from them. As I hop down, I let Job down too, just so he can uh, not have to worry about getting off the horse later. And and Job Job grabs onto Air's back uh, and rides yep. him like a backpack <laughs> <laughs> across the river. I'm assuming since I got a 23 that I made it across. Oh yeah, too. oh yeah, you you made it made it like that. If anybody else is rolling stealth, uh, beat an 18, uh, to because this guard is looking back and forth at this and uh, this path. Uh, very. Okay, I played intense. enough Zelda to know how that works. I have dis <laughs> I have disadvantage, so it's a 13. Uh, you are not stealthed. Um, if you try to move, he will notice you. I will just kind of hide behind the bushes. Then. Yeah, if you move past that black line, you're going to get attacked. Uh, he is <clears throat> looking at them differently, but but well enough to see someone who is rolling a thirteen. Someone who's wearing loud chainmail. Yes, very very much. Um. So yeah, what are y'all doing then? Uh, hmm. I mean, I want to just run in and start whacking things with my sword, but I feel like maybe well, you guys we... want to be shooting arrows first or something. Can we can we make out what the uh, interrogation what they're talking about? Um, if you uh, 
Well, Alindsay is the only one who speaks Infernal. It's Infernal again. Um, I'm listening. They're still do that. Um, but yeah, if you want to try to listen in, absolutely. What do I need to roll for that? Uh, what is that? Investigation or... Is that perception? Perception? I can't what remember what mean? listening is. Yeah, it'd be perception. Yeah, it'd be perception, okay. yeah. Oh, what is my perception? Plus one. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, he's not making any... It's obvious that he is interrogating him. Uh, you hear him, uh, the dragon... The, he's the dragon wing. Uh, you hear the, the prisoner uh, begging for his life. He is, he, he is screaming in Infernal uh, for someone to help him, uh, is begging for, uh, for his life. The, the other cultist is uh, asking him. You hear, uh, you hear the, the white-haired uh, drow say say uh ugh. in infernal say i need to get the information he, he's asking about i need to know where the treasure hordes are i need to know where you guys have put this i know that you have stolen things and you're going to give it to us this is the last opportunity that you have if we don't get this you're not making it out of this alive and the dragon wing you know screams and begs for help and uh asks for him not to kill him but it's that over and over again. Um, you see that the Nightblade is con uh, uh, the uh, the the cultist is stabbing him in the uh, in the back with a knife over and over again every time he asks a question. Okay, well, but, but yeah, he's asking for information about the uh, the all of the treasure that had been stolen and being moved around uh, Baldur's Gate. Okay, well, I I kind of want to just pull mm. out my bow and shoot this guy. Okay. Any objections? <laughs> Sounds Done. good to me. I mean, okay. It's a little difficult How far for me to is hear this? the plan from where I'm at, but I see you readying your weapons. And I <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah, don't. So I'm gonna you shoot. can't see anything. You're just you're you're paying cl very close attention to the. Uh, to the to the dragon the, the the dragon man staring at you uh very intently <laughs> uh but you see a her draw her bow from a distance and then it's like uh oh uh uh I don't know what they're saying but uh this is gonna be trouble <laughs> so because I'm only half do off, I get I'm just advantage a few seconds behind her yep <laughs> sorry do I get advantage since we're like from stealth sneaky? yeah okay so it would be two d twenty instead of one d twenty uh separate rolls though. Oh, separate rolls. Okay. Separate rolls of the 20s and add your uh, ranged modifier for the weapon. Okay. Why did it do it twice? You just was supposed to. You wrote a 13 plus 1 and then an 11 plus 3. And then an 11 plus 3. You... But I only typed it in once. Okay, whatever. Hey, it did work though. Um, <laughs> uh, it did. You did hit. You slam uh, the arrow like directly into his shoulder. Like as they're talking, the 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 prisoner is begging. You can hear him begging for his life that he can't take him where he's told him everything that he can. The the drow is is yelling at him that he has to have this. That his master won't let him leave without this information. And as he says information, the air your arrow just thunks right in his shoulder and knocks him back. Okay, so I do damage? Yes, you do damage to him. Not much. Not much. Uh he uh he is standing there uh hurt, like obviously this has hurt, but he looks down at it and uh can't quite see where it's coming from yet. He knows the direction of it, but he can't see you from that. Success. I motion, I motion for job to hop off of my back as I ready an arrow and will do. Take aim. Yep, do it. Fired will. Fire! Beep, 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 beep. That's the hit DC, right? So. Yep. Twenty four. Oh yeah, you. Same thing happens to you as as he is stunned, looking at the at the arrow in his side. He realizes that there's another one that hits him in his other shoulder. It's like, oh, and he knocks back. And he's if he were 
it's like you see in the movie where they're pinned against a wall, only there's no wall. There's only air. But he has arrows sticking out from both of his shoulders now. So roll your damage. 1d8 plus 3 piercing. 10. Ooh, nice. You knock this guy straight back uh, off of the altar from where he was when the, the force of both of your arrows make him stumble back to where he is moving uh, off of that, where he's just at the teetering at the very, very edge of the, the water. He's, he's hurt, but he is not really hurt yet. He is angry. Curiosity. Oh. oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, is, did the guy in green do anything like look up and be like uh okay cool he hasn't had an opportunity yet okay uh, okay that was just like <laughs> and he okay. got knocked back and so as he's lying there he he's looking around but he is dazed like he he's looking but he can't see much he's just reacting right now that he isn't getting stabbed in the back over and over again Okay. So uh at this point the the dragonborn hear what's going on. The the closest one to uh to the to the drow comes over here to check and see what's going on. And this one uh is still paying very close attention to the to the walls that he doesn't notice the one or the, not the walls, the, the paths and doesn't notice that anything is going on behind him yet. All right. Can, uh, can I run out and do something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, job is going to run over here <laughs> and he's going to attack this dragonborn in the back <laughs> with his great sword. <laughs> and as as he does so, he shouts, "Fuck it!" <laughs> and also, Lily, come out here and help! <laughs> <laughs> and I fire my crossbow. Woohoo! All right. Uh, nineteen. Yep, absolutely. All right. I think I think we're pretty much done with stealth by this point anyway, right? I think so. Yeah, there there's there's not stealth now. Uh and it. awesome. All right. And a 25 on the card. Oh yeah. You you hear the you hit the dragonborn on the back and they are solid. You hear <clears throat> like when it gets hit and it breathes in heavily and turns around and doesn't see you. <laughs> it's just looking straight sideways like it got hit in the between the shoulders things like six and a half feet tall and it's just looking and it can't see you at this point and then and bama it comes around and you just slam right in the back of his neck just like there's an arrow sticking out like he doesn't feel it it was four damage he didn't yeah. feel that one but it's there it's gonna come into play it always does this also sounds like a bad guy in zelda doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he is uh, very much right on top of, of Job, but he doesn't uh, see it. So now, everybody, let's roll initiative for the uh, for the turn. 19. All right, Lily got a 19. Four. Four? Scary move if I were. Uh, there, when we were in college, there was a oh excuse me oh i wish it did something for uh initiative but yeah, you no. get to go first <laughs> uh uh but uh when we were in college we called the movie theater because you had to call uh the movie theater to know what movies were playing and it was when scary movie four was in theaters and the the recording was so funny we called it over and over again because the the person who had recorded it had such an accent that it came out as in scary movie four <laughs> and I don't know why me and all of my friends thought it was the funniest thing. So now every time I just hear somebody say four, I'm like, scary move it four. So it means <laughs> nothing to anyone else who's listening to this or playing. But every time I hear it, you'll probably hear me say, say scary move it four at some point down the line again. But it's so fun we, to hear you say it. Where are we at on initiatives? <laughs> Everybody, Todd got four. 
second. Oh, if I can interrupt, our uh, Extra Life charity is up to $150 now. Holy Ooh. butt balls, everybody. That's, That's awesome, awesome. everyone. <laughs> you fantastic human people. I don't know how to tell who the who the most recent donor it was. was. Put, put your name, chat. Sweet. Oh, okay. Sweet. Thanks. Thanks. You guys are all fantastic yeah. human beings. You know that, like all every single one of you. I take back every bad thing I've ever said. <laughs> oh, put name here. That's awesome. I'm I'm so happy. I'm gonna okay, thunk so my. All right, what is your initiative, Alanzia? Yours was 19. 19. And Bama, oh, they, they were all there. I yep. did not. My brain on that one, I don't know why. Uh, the the cultist did not do well. Um, uh, let's see, I got 19. I am not doing well with the... Uh, Alanzia and Bama will go at the same time. Uh I'm taking this out of uh, Matt Mercer's playbook uh, where you guys get to decide what happens on your turn and who does what first. Um, then air and Todd down at the very bottom. Womp, womp. Well, you don't have to say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the dro actually did get just under you. So um, yeah, so now it is air's turn. All right. Well, uh, the green dragonborn is kind of dazed and confused and not understanding what hit him in the back. Uh, I knock another arrow and let it fly at him. That's fair. He is, he's looking around, but uh, he has not seen anything yet. So the arrow flies. Let's, uh, add again. Action. A 20 plus seven, right? Yes. All right, cool. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's do that Ooh. thing. Uh, <laughs> nice. The the I arrow, <laughs> the arrow that you that you fly. Let let's just let me put it this way. How do you want to kill this guy? <laughs> uh, I would like it to just like straight between the eyes. Just straight between the eyes. He just fall over into yeah. the water. And he just he and he just falls back. For lack of a better dead. term, the arrow just flies directly into his into his 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 head, uh, as picturesque as it could possibly be. It, it's like if you it's a textbook example of pulling out your bow, firing it, hitting the bullseye, and the giant dragon man that you're trying to kill perfectly <laughs> stage falls into the water, just push. <laughs> so now no idea so what happened. He, he is complete he what he he died happy and confused uh he was like i'm gonna kill something in a second and then nothing uh that was he he went as well as the the dragon cultist could possibly want to go as well uh, as you can expect it's true so i don't even need to roll damage no no you he was okay. he was low enough that you were <laughs> that that when you got a, a 20 and and with no nah, you're he he was gonna die regardless <laughs> um, so so now it is Bama and Alinzia. What are you guys doing? Bama, you can go first if you want. Or not. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Um, seeing as how we just watched the Dragonborn go down, I kind of want to just uh, lock eyes with you and we both take aim at the other Dragonborn. Okay. Y'all should be within range for that. Like, the bow has an absurd range, right? So wait, this guy or this guy? Oh, I need to actually move that guy. I didn't move the dead one. Um, that one? Okay. This guy dead. That guy dead. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Okay. All right, then. Yeah. Fire it, Will. That's a short. You, you don't hit him. Your arrow flies wide, uh, lands in the Good. water. You hear it with a nice... As it hits the the water, the same thing happens to yours, Alenzia. Yours, like they crisscross in front of him and then fly and just drop sadly into the water. So sad. So, nothing. so now it's, it's Todd. It's little job. <laughs> right. I. Oh boy. So this water here is three feet uh, deep. It is three feet deep. <laughs> And you're three feet tall. Yeah. You're three feet tall, and you got a 10 foot of three feet water around. So that's around. probably difficult terrain for me. Do you have a swim speed? 
Um, oh gosh. I don't actually know where players get swim speed. Yeah, I know aquatic I monsters have swim speed. Uh, and it's it's also typically the aquatic uh, races that have swim speed. Or, oh, Sakura or, says it's 25. So yeah, you're good to move through that and swim okay. across it. Okay, well, I'm going to swimmy swim swim over to the island here. <laughs> and then run over. So that's what? That's 15 and 20 will put me close enough. Yeah, that'd be and right there. Let's let's uh, attack with my great sword. Tiny gnome just runs like, like this is out that. of a cartoon. Like I... <laughs> what was that? I just I was gonna say I don't I don't wanna try picturing that tiny gnome swimming across three feet of water with this giant great sword. Oh, no, I want everybody who's watching this to picture it. I want everyone <laughs> to think of this three foot gnome carrying what's basically a shard blade from uh, the, the Stormlight Archive on his back in my That's mind. Bigger than I know him. it's not, but it's like eight times bigger than him at this point. And it's, it's like 10 feet tall. It's just physically impossible. And he's swimming across. So he comes up out of the, out of the water, like Matthew McConaughey on a beach and just all run, right, right, pulling right. it off of his back. Just <laughs> screaming is what I'm picturing here. Like that's what you've got. So, so that, you that better roll right. good, Todd. Uh, like I only rolled in a 12. You once again, sp get spun around by this, by this sword oh. and it clops into the ground and, and just kind of plops you standing facing this dragon. You're just looking up at it uh, with your sword, like kind of uh, buried into the ground where you can pull it out easily next time with no penalty. You just missed, <laughs> but I thought it's funny. Just have it like, it just stopped you because from spinning like a top. And I, I shout out, I've distracted him allies. <laughs> the uh the dragon or actually the dro uh behind you uh does not think that you have distracted him he's like you have which means you've not distracted me little man uh in infernal and uh he but he just points at you because his role was so terrible and he doesn't hit you with anything at all he's just pointing <laughs> like you're no and nothing at all happens from him the <laughs> the the dragon in front of you is like, are you? No. A 14 plus. Oh no, I forgot what his plus was. Plus two is 16. Does, uh, no, no, that's sorry. A, uh, 19. His melee well, attack that, is a 19. That definitely hits. So you, he looks at you and he laughs. He's like, <laughs> oh, wet gnome. And he, <laughs> That didn't roll right. Uh, and he does a five damage to you, just smacks you with his claw. Nothing. That's a flesh wound. No flesh tastes good. <laughs> I'm also not sure why this dragonborn is a barbarian now, too, but yeah. he is. this is what happens. This is what happens when it gets past 10 o'clock. It just, it's all gone for me. <laughs> um, Fair. Uh, so yeah, he, that happens the one and the other one's dead. So it is, uh, back around to Airwolf to, uh, to save the day. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to notch another arrow and, uh, see what I can do for, for to help job out with that dragonborn right in front of him. Fair enough. And I just realized I actually get to roll with my proficiency bonus as well. So that's a D 20 plus nine for my Holy attack roll. Mother of Pearl. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, you pull the bow back. And as you pull this bow that you have trained with for years, this I'm assuming <laughs> and I'm going to say that this bow has been like your best friend. It's it's amazing that with someone so so close to you so gracious and for those of you who didn't see it was a one uh it uh it was it's been just there for you it just plunks out of your hand goes right into the water and sinks all the way to the bottom of the three feet water and you're just like how i've never done that oh. i don't uh, uh. and if the bow would have uh had a personality it would be giving you the finger as it as it floated down to the bottom of the uh to the creek okay 
So I will pull that out of my inventory. Or should I just leave it in there for now? Oh, leave it in there. You can grab it at any okay. point. You can you can take an action um, and grab it. It's just you just ah you yeah. forgot how to use bows for a second. <laughs> um, is that part of my? Uh, you can you can still no move or, or do anything, anything but yeah. uh, like that. Bonus actions if you have them. Yeah, I'm not sure what oh. the uh, ranger actually gets his bonus actions or anything along those lines. Uh, can you use the bonus fighting. action to get the bow back out of the water? You can no, move over would, it and be the, able to grab it, action, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. You yeah, how me, does that work? Me, uh, <laughs> Bama and Todd, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask y'all on this one if you because I don't actually know. I would usually go it as uh, as a full turn to do <laughs> yeah, movement and then grab it again. Well, you can equip a weapon as a free action. So if it's just a matter of reaching down and picking it up, I I would think that could be a free action. Okay, I just have to read what Fuzzy Cow in in chat wrote. He said, in a moment of insanity, you you try to tie the bow into your hair. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, generally, I think uh, with Sakura that picking it up is an action. So, uh... Okay, yeah, so I I just kind of stare at the the bow in the water, and and I'm like, just like, how? (laughs) Yep. And it's just... You're just stunned. It, it's yeah. it's just like wow, and now it is uh, Bama and Alinzia's turn to uh, Lily Lily Lindsia. Uh It's <laughs> Lily Lindsia's turn. And we're we're probably looking at each other, shrugging, trying to figure out how both of our arrows missed previously, and how <laughs> y'all's crisscrossed in the air, dropped into the water, and then yeah. he just dr- threw his bow in there gonna, uh, how we all for some just reason. Suck. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna shout over to her. I guess we got to work a little more on our choreography and let's do it again. <laughs> All right. I'm shooting this dude. Yep. 16. Uh, which dude are you shooting? Red duty. The red dude again. Yeah. You hit the one in front of job. Yep. Why won't mine show up? Another solid four. Solid four. You there are we go. Now it away. He's, he's, uh, being whittled down, he barely even notices the uh, the arrow that comes through. It's just like hmm, a thing that happened to me, <laughs> and uh, is turning his attention. Still, doesn't even take his attention away from uh, from the gnome. I think I'm gonna. Since I only have fifteen, and you. That's like yep, yep. I can totally see it. Okay, right, so I'm... mine also got a 16, so I'm also... Yep, so yours yeah. would uh, plunk him at the same time. And it's uh, just again, damage. You guys are just, just like using this guy as a pin cushion. <laughs> wow. It's like if... if when you We go... are in sync, though. Yes, we are. We are so in sync. But if you were the Backstreet Boys, he would already be dead. But <laughs> Oh! Oh, good night, folks. I'm done. Uh... K- Katie, wherever she is, just cringed. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> um so so yeah that one again just pin cushion like this guy looks like one of those tomato uh craft needle things from walmart it's just <laughs> like but arrows like he's big and red but has like needles and arrows just sticking out of him he's he's angry at the gnome he doesn't know where the arrows are coming from but he's just staring at this little gnome uh, whose turn um, it is now, actually. Uh, oh. Really quick, though, it has the dude in the green armor caught on? He is just lying there about to be unconscious. He oh, is okay. he is on the verge of death and okay. just, just dazed, and you can see that it would not take much to uh, to finish him off. Okay. Don't roll a one or you might kill him. There is that possibility, yes. Oh. All right, so can I can I pick up my great sword and uh, make an attack on the dragonborn? Yeah, you Only are. If right you don't there. roll a one. If I don't roll a one, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, don't do that. That's true. Don't do that. All right. Make him a pin totally... cushion job. <laughs> <laughs> Put in the big pin. <laughs> roll a one, you end up breaking that thing like Gohan did. <laughs> that's. That's for you, okay, by the way. Ooh. One of the guys in chat. Uh, 13. 13 does not. Uh, 
I don't know how it's possible. It's like your your character and your sword break the 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 weird physics of this realm where you slice at him where it should be an easy hit with a, like a ten foot sword, and it's just just air. And he's like, <laughs> gnome. Uh, I didn't yeah. this time. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is true. <laughs> Uh, the, the dro on the other hand, uh, looks over at the, uh, at the dragonborn and just moves himself over here to you oh, dear. and he rolled a 15. It's a 15 uh, hit you, Todd. That does. Yeah. That does. Awesome. He, he takes he has a uh, the knife in his hand. Uh, he you feel as he walks over to you, just sick to your stomach. You feel weak. Uh, it's like evil is emanating from him, and you don't know why. Like you, there's nothing visual about it. But when he comes near you, you feel weak and sick, as though just something inside you is rotting. And he comes out with the with the dagger that he was stabbing uh, this person with, and hit you for five. Just stabs right at your shoulder, just just like in one swift movement, just slices at you with a dagger uh, on your left shoulder for five damage. For five damage. And do I know that the sickness is coming from him, or do I just think I had some bad tacos before I left? <laughs> You just feel it as he comes near you. It's uh, oh, it feels yeah. very similar to bad tacos. Um, <laughs> if if you've if you felt food poisoning from burritos or tacos, it feels like that, but without the shooting pains. Uh, but you notice it only <laughs> when he came near you. It was just a sudden onset uh, taco sick. I've had worse from Del Taco than you. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this is a Taco Bell household. And he smacks you for another six damage. Oh no! <laughs> no, 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 no! no. Um, <laughs> now it is the dragon's turn. Who has a fifteen on you? I don't know why I said it like that, but does a fifteen hit? I can't remember already. It does. Yes. He 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 just decides. He takes his fist and he balls it up, and he tries to hammer you in the ground like a nail. Oh, wow. And he hits you for six damage. Just boom, boom, right. boom. Well, yeah, I'm and so I'm like, conscious and everything, but uh, uh, it just occurred to me to ask, uh, who's the healer? Yep, okay. You, you are. What? You are? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the tank and the healer. I have, um, I have, I I have cure I'm wounds in... or something like that. Uh, well... Yeah, but that's the uh, the range of touch on that. So. Yeah, y'all yeah. got touch. It, if, yeah, I mean, I don't know how I'm to tell you this, Todd. I can, I can heal myself too, but I'm busy getting beat up. So. I don't, Todd. I don't know how to tell you this, bud. But if you're planning on tanking, your AC is a little low. <laughs> well, that's okay. Don't worry, guys. I, was, I can totally solo tank this. I was this literally going to ask: Are you wearing armor? <laughs> I'm wearing. I am wearing some great armor. Okay, look, the fact is I spent all of my money on the greatsword. Oh, no. So I, I, I couldn't <laughs> afford as good an armor as you might hope. But I think it's worth it because I've got a cool sword. You do. Your sword is picturesque, yeah. as I've said before. Like, it's... I, I just love the sword. idea. I don't know why. I think it's because it's late and um, I feel kind of I, just, just silly at this point, but it's it's like a <laughs> Thomas Kincaid painting come to life. It, <laughs> yeah. like, and it doesn't look like that. Don't get me wrong. That's not what it looks like. That's what it feels like. So whatever yeah. that makes you feel, that's what that sword looks like. <laughs> all of the Thomas Kincaid paintings of great swords. <laughs> I would buy one of those. All right. Don't worry. So, don't worry. Uh, I think the bad guys are done, and we're going to kill them all before they get another turn, and uh, then it will be victory for us. And he he pounds you. Like I, I also want to let you know that as he hits you on the head to knock, like try to drive you into the ground, it's one damage each hit in my head. It's like, dink, 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 dink. Uh, where no, it's not a bad hit. It's just annoying, man. Uh, right, so I'm now... pounded by a dragonborn. <laughs> Thank you, folks. That's good night. Um, we uh, we're just gonna move right on to air troll at that point. Um, well, I don't have my bow in hand, 
Um, but since uh, Job's doing such a good job over there of, of tanking, I uh, I'm gonna forgo this turn to pick up my bow and uh, so I, you know move out here, pick it up, and get back over here to behind uh -huh. these rocks for a little bit of safety and hiding again. Okie dokie. Any um any what anything else that you want to do say move around you've probably got another 12 not 12 where did 12 even come from uh about another about 10 move around uh movement left so um can't really attack so uh i just kind of inspect the longbow to make sure it's not uh not damaged in any way and uh yeah that's that's no. gonna have to be my turn i guess it's happy to be back home it wonders why you threw it in the water to begin with. It's its feelings are hurt. Uh but no. <laughs> so Bama and Alinzia, it's time for you, uh Lilinzia. <laughs> okay, well I am going to try to save job. Because I feel bad job. for the little teeny guy. So wait, how far can I move? I have thirty feet. Thirty of feet, walking. I believe. Thirty five feet. Yep. Oh, okay. 35 feet. So, yeah, I can go up next yeah. to him then. Oops. I can I... only do 15, so I can't even cross the water, so I've got to go all the way to the stones. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, these. But I, I, I will fire at the uh, oh. at the red guy. Going across the water is probably difficult terrain for me, though, huh? So I probably can't go all the way. But at 35, I would assume you could. At 35, I would assume you could get there and, and not worry about it. Like I'm okay. looking at me as a halfling wearing chainmail and fifteen foot walking speed, not gonna happen. So I'm just gonna shoot with a crossbow. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. Twenty. Good hell, you probably ran across the surface of the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You are you are an you are an elf. Uh, There's some damage for the dragon. Oh wow. So the the dragonborn is looking at the at the gnome that he is so proudly tried to hammer into the, <laughs> into the, the ground. And we're not as, saying pound anymore. I couldn't, <laughs> if I wanted to, if I wanted to pound that idea into people's brains <laughs> and, and really get the, the idea pounded into them that this guy was pounding the gnome, <laughs> I have better words than that. It's like when you send your dog to the pound. I don't know. I don't even know what that means. Um, so <laughs> I have no clue at this point. So uh, that was uh, you, Bama, that did that. So how do you want to kill this guy, Bama? Oh, he right. is focused on pounding this. <laughs> like I, I'm almost picturing, you know, we're all try I'm trying to run around. Lindsay is trying to run across as he's coming down to pound him for like the last time. Like I just want to hit him square in the chest and him be looking just down at his hands while he's pounding and trying to figure out why there's a new hole leaking blood you know what <laughs> that as he does this like he he's seeing his blood come come out of his chest and as as he does this as he sees this and he's thinking about the gnome like he doesn't know where this arrow came from it's like thanos at the end of end game where he's like this can't happen to me and just <laughs> he just he just turns into ash and flies off well, flies off into nothing <laughs> No, his his body collapses, and uh, at at Job's feet, he is uh, just about as tall, lying down as uh, as the gnome is. But he is completely lifeless at this point. You can see the blood draining into the water. Nice shot, Lily. Thanks. Okay, so I ran across here. Is it possible? I mean, the movement probably was my whole main action to get all the way over there no no, move no movement's not a main through. action you can okay. uh, move and take an action is it possible for me to, to do cure wounds yes you are right up next to him you can absolutely do it okay then i want to do that how do i do that uh it will take a spell slot at level two you should only have like one uh like first level spells as ranger yeah um it mm -hmm. should it should have you might have two are you using uh the D, D beyond character sheet yeah i have i have two spells okay so yeah creature you it touch be regains 1d8. It, no, 1d8 plus spell casting ability modifier uh okay which ranger is i don't remember 
Bama uh, Todd Hale. Never hey. played. Hit point. I've never played a ranger, and all of my rangers know how to do their own math, says, so I can't it help says, you. It says regain one d eight plus one hit point for me. So if she if she clicks so, on cure wound on the words cure wounds, it'll bring up uh, the little thing to the side, and it should say it right underneath. Doesn't it me because I have a PDF? She has a PDF printed uh, out or on the PDF. I don't know which. So um, yeah. But yeah, so let's say just plus one, one d eight plus okay. one, because y'all are essentially the same right now. Wisdom. It's wisdom then. Soccer, you're good people too. Oh yeah. Oh, so okay. So, well, yeah. my Soccer's wisdom a thirty year was also one. So okay. So nine it's... hit points. Thank you. You feel, you feel the sickness like stay like the, like you you feel better. It's like you feel like you could eat like eight more tacos right now. It's like <laughs> not that you're hungry. It's just like you feel a void. That that needs tacos. That you're not really sick anymore, but it's like, like hey, Taco Bell now. I'd like Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco like, Bell Del Taco and Taco cake. For, for him. But yeah, you you feel much better. Like you 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 still feel a little bit ill from the uh, the dro being near you, but like it's her touching you has changed the way that you see this situation. Oh, all right. My allies have come to my aid. <laughs> and so now it's your turn. All right, I'm gonna use my Finish great sword. <laughs> Stick him with yeah, a pointy we're gonna, end. We're gonna attack this. Uh, by the way, how I've always said it, drow. Is Same. it dro? Did I say dro? I've always said dro in my head, but it's drow because that's what they were saying in Neverwinter recently when I was playing okay. it. And so I'm like, man, that's gonna be hard to change. So if I say dro, it, it's drow. All right, I'm gonna attack that drow with my great sword, and I'm what? gonna, sh I'm gonna shout, fart! Oh, fart monkeys! <laughs> yeah, you... Maybe you should stop shouting for the gauntlet. Oh no, that's my that's my war cry. The, 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 the gauntlet has failed you. Oh. The, <laughs> the drow, <laughs> like Neo in the Matrix, the drow shifts just ever so slightly and the the air is cut directly beside him you see the the hair on his face just i said dro again uh on on his face just kind of whiffles in the wind even though that's not a word that hair does and it just <laughs> it just flutters and your sword I hate when my hair the, whiffles uh, hits the ground uh behind him and clangs off of the stone altar and My just... faith is being tested, but I shall not falter for the gauntlet. <laughs> your faith will falter before the end of this. The oh, drow says. Shut your demon face, jerk. You can't understand <laughs> him. It's an infernal. Oh. You can't understand me either, because I'm a dumb <laughs> And I understand both of you, so I'm just laughing. And and the drow, <laughs> the drow at this point, while we're throwing insults back at each other, back and forth at each other, uh, tries to stab you with his dagger and just misses. Like it's it's the funniest thing. He's like, "Ha ha, I'm gonna get you!" And then he just misses. Like he 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 stabs three inches to the right of you, and it's like, <laughs> "Why, dude?" So that was his turn. So now it's back to air troll. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna notch another arrow and let it fly at the guy. All right. So that is one d twenty plus nine. <laughs> as long as yeah. I don't roll a one. Oh, oh it wasn't a one. <laughs> it wasn't a one. Uh, we, I wish that DMs on roll twenty could just change a roll by clicking on them. Like if I could do that, that would totally I be changed to a one. GM, you can, you can just it. declare that something happens if you want. So air troll, you, you pull the, the you pull the the bow back. You're so proud to have it back in your possession from from saving it from under the water, and it just disintegrates and you die. Wow. <laughs> no, you you pull it back. Wah, wah, wah. And, and the the arrow goes directly through the the dro's neck, just straight through. Like he he couldn't see it, he couldn't feel it. He. He didn't even know what hit him, and he is still standing straight up on Elinzia and Bama's turn that's coming up. But you have stealth killed him, like just by taking out the very center of his neck uh, in a perfect shot directly 
uh, through his right. neck and into the uh, into the woods beyond. Uh, happens yeah, so quickly, such a precise shot that uh, Alinzia and, and uh, Lily and Alinzia have their uh, their time to do whatever they want to and include you in, as well in how you all three take care of this corpse. I think if I saw somebody's neck get shot out like that and they were like inches in front of me, I would probably throw up. Okay, while she's <laughs> throwing up, I'm firing into the crossbow bolt. <laughs> <laughs> it plunks directly into his forehead between his like right between his eyes. It is like a Lindsay of vomits on him. As soon as the, the arrow goes through his neck, her vomit is just all over him. Air troll has killed him. She's puked on him. Bama's like, I think it is on this too. And, 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 and job is just standing there with his giant. sword, like, how did I miss? How did I miss? <laughs> and, and, and I'll, I have to say, I have to take a pause right here with her throwing up that, uh, I don't know if any of you have read any of my, uh, any of the novels that I've written. But uh, I didn't realize it was a thing until I was going back through one that I'm editing right now with Austin uh, that we had written. And uh, one of the comments that he had left was on one of mine was like, oh, look, it wouldn't be a B.J. Keaton book if someone didn't throw up at the beginning. And sure enough, I because I'd had someone say like, and so and so uh, retched and vomited all over. And it was just like, I guess I do do that a lot. I also said doo doo. <laughs> Uh, but Alinzia, thank you for having a store. One of my stories have someone throw up in it for that. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, hats Just off. for you. But you get advantage on your next roll. Uh, Aww. So um, he 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 falls over like he he is gone. Um, Wait, we get and... advantage for throwing up now <laughs> because of me. Because I well, we could exploit that. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't curbs. Um, <laughs> Man, can you imagine the advantage that you would get for being like a, a chronic uh, vomiter in GURPS? That'd um, be uh, hard to role play, but <laughs> it would be. It'd be a lot of so, points. So he he's fallen over and he he is just covered in sick. And the the uh, the elf the the elf that's in front of you the the dragon um, whatever it's called the uh, the the dragon scale my, man my dragon wing uh, is just on on his last breath he he reaches out and he he reaches into his his pocket here like it is and it pulls out a scroll and uh he he I sh everyone should have in their handouts now a uh, letter um yes. he he hands you a scroll and he just just is still after that, he he holds a scroll out as his arm falls, and uh, you see a scroll. Um, is for everyone... it in infernal, or can we? No, it? no, it is in common. It is uh, this is uh, one of the criminals that was uh, working toward uh, stealing everything, and uh, he it says that uh, it's instructions that he got from his boss that says to hit for him to head to the bathhouse in Baldur's gate and retrieve the stolen treasure. Uh, the bathhouse is located in the Northern portion of the lower city. It's uh, got a walled garden uh, frolicking nymphs are carved into the front gate. If uh, Duke Vanthampur thinks that uh, she can use the queen's treasure to buy the loyalty of the cult of the dead three, uh, then she's sorely mistaken. I'll be looking for you in Baldur's gate. When I arrive, bring my treasure to me or Ultus will be coming for you. Uh, and it's signed, uh, Lord Worm Speaker Resmir. Not Lord, but Worm Speaker Resmir. And you. And he was, you realize he was given this, and this is the information that the dro, the drow was trying to get from him. Hmm. If only that drow knew he could have just reached in the dude's pocket. Right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe he wouldn't have a hole in his perception. Neck. <laughs> what was that, Air Troll? So she probably shouldn't have rolled a one on that on that perception then. <laughs> <laughs> no, he. Um, well, while while they're it's all sunlight sensitivity, this, that's what it is. While they're all reading this letter, I'm kind of searching for some arrows to see if I can find any. Yeah, that you, are salvageable. You, you find uh, all but the last arrow that flew through the drow's neck into the into the woods beyond uh, everything that you had got. Uh, 
just kind of plunked around. Uh, you find the couple that Alinzia and uh, Lily lost as well. Um, if uh, if y'all want uh, anything yeah. like that, I hand them back their bolts and uh, arrows. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just kind of nod. And, hmm. Yeah. So, what are we doing? I guess we're heading to the bathhouse to get our treasure. Um, <laughs> I'm see. trying to calm my stomach down. <laughs> I'm I'm wondering where our uh, our guide is, and so we can ask her and see if she has any idea of where we need you to go. You went home. <laughs> um, yeah, she is. Uh, she is gone. Uh, you mm-hmm. you don't see her anywhere. Actually, you. Uh, there's probably a good indication. There's probably a good thought that she went back to uh, El Terrell to talk to her boss and just say that uh, to tell that this got taken care of. Okay. So do we head back down there? If uh... so, you've got uh, you killed these three. You've got uh, the ability to uh, you can loot or look around or explore the other area or uh, return back to town for a reward. I'd like or to your loot these guys. Yeah, definitely loot. Um, right. in the drow's in the drow's pocket uh, pouch, you find a a uh, single uh human bone um it is it looks like a human bone it has runes uh carved into it and it is a uh bone of animation everyone should have the handout for that and y'all can decide who wants it it is it. <laughs> again for those of you who can't see um a wondrous item requires attunement uh the bone appears to be a regular human upper arm bone while holding the bone you can use an action to speak a command word and turn the bone into a skeleton uh the skeleton reverts to the bone after one hour or when it drops to zero hit points the skeleton is friendly to you and your companions for the duration uh, you do roll initiative for the skeleton which has its own turns it obeys any verbal command that you issue if you don't issue any commands to the skeleton it defends itself but otherwise takes no action uh, once the bone is used, you have to wait until the next dawn to use it again. Hmm. Okay, well, I, who wants it? I don't it? want any kind of necromancy thing like that, so I'll pass. Take it. You can have it. Go um, for it. Get a little skeleton really, in. I'm not normally a companion type person, so you can have it. I'm just really bad at remembering I have things like that. <laughs> I am too. Like I'm playing with Austin in a in a group and we have uh I have a familiar imp with my warlock and I completely forget it's there. Um you also find uh in his in his pouch and on both of the other uh dragon uh dragonborn people, uh you'll now see uh that there are three uh roses of bale. Uh, where uh, it is a wondrous item that emits a reddish glow whenever uh, you're around. Bell spawn is within ten feet of it. Uh, that is a uh, uh, any of the uh, the devil's bell, or I know I say bell. Some people say ball. I don't know. Um, whenever any of the demon, the devil's bells uh, spawn and human uh, interaction, or uh, is it glowing right now? No, it is not glowing right okay. now. Again, I would take it, but I always forget that I have things like that. Well, there I are would, three of I them. Would, I would uh, take one of these roses. I would also like to take one. And so with that, so there's one more you can do whatever you want to with it. Um, well, I'll take it. He, uh, what it says about Bale Spawn is, uh, Bale, the god of murder, conceived many offspring in hopes that they would resurrect him after his demise in the time of troubles. Uh, and, uh, when one Bale Spawn is slain, the surviving Bale Spawn collect more of uh, his divine power. So it's uh-huh. kind of like, uh, Horcruxes. Okay. So, ooh. Well. <laughs> and you can detect them now. Uh, Job wants to run down here and investigate this body on the trail here. 
Okay, you do, 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 got to reveal. Uh, reveal area. Stop it, man. Gotta run after uh, him. Keep him safe. And I kind of, yeah, shrug and you, head over there. <laughs> you see that there is a body with that is lying in the that is lying in the middle of the path with a spear impaled straight through it. Uh, you you see that this is long dead. The blood is dried. He the the it is seeped into the mud and already made itself a uh, already made itself into the ground. Basically, it's not like fresh in any way whatsoever. Uh, it is very okay. very dead. Uh, it looks like the person who uh you got the scroll from. It is dressed like them. Well, I'm going to turn around and seeing everybody here uh, say, oh, yeah, this guy's been dead a long time. Never mind. <laughs> Nothing exciting here. Nothing to see here. Move along. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, and okay. we head back well, or we want to head back? Is, do we, did we loot these guys, too? Yeah, they. that's where the other two roses came from. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, just checking. And, there's... Oh, and was there anything else on this dude? Uh, on that guy, let me check and see if there was. I don't think so on him. Yes, actually, there was. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, a uh, roll an investigation for this one. Okay. I got a plus three on that. I have plus zero, so you go for it. A 20 plus three gives me 19. 19. Hey. Yes, you find a silver ring uh on the uh on the dead man's finger uh with the insignia of Tiamat uh on it on the right hand. Uh, the ring itself is worth about 15 gold. Uh I'm going to roll a sleight of hand to see mm -hmm. if uh I can get it off of his hand without anybody uh seeing me take it. <laughs> All right. That's uh plus 3. I'm going to say beat uh 12. Yeah, that's not gonna do it. No, they notice it. They see you doing it, but it's up to them what they try. do. Eh, worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> so you can head back to. I'm just shaking uh, my head at you, like, why are you trying to be all sneaky about that? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was I'm like, does anybody want it? Go for it. Uh, Tiamat's an evil dragon, evil dragon god thing, right? Mm hmm. She is the yeah. mother of dragons. Yeah, but, but cool she's name, evil. Right? Oh, yes. Very evil. Yes. Okay. Yeah. My, my paladin doesn't want any part of it. Job? Oh, no. Tiamat is an evil. Oh, yeah. Shit. Uh, no, I'm good. Really? All right. I took the bounce. Cool. So so right, you let's head on back let's, yeah let's go home all right which way are y'all marching home the way that you came in or the other way that uh, is down here by the uh by the dead guy i say let's go the other way and make sure we cleared everybody out well, that sounds good to me i'm always up for a fight so you see that there are two paths that uh that you uh are in you see that there is uh I got it to reveal again. Uh, you see that there is a path leading uh, to the creek. That's the word I'm looking for, the creek that you came in on. And then you also see uh, down the other path a uh, skeleton Ooh. and uh, someone who is hunched over an altar and just cr grinding into some sort of bowl. Uh, they're hunched down, like uh, working like an alchemist would. Uh, you see their arm just uh, twisting like a mortar and pestle, mortar and pestle. Uh, kind of thing. Where yeah, they're uh, they're completely disregarding you, and there is just a a green skeleton just kind of wobbling, looking at you as you look back down at it through the. Uh, uh, I would like to use my divine sense. To uh, tell to 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 uh, sense if there's if evilness coming from that guy, is weird uh, skeleton. 
there is <laughs> nothing but evil. Like, remember the taco yeah. feeling that you had from the drow? Uh, uh, I'm going to make this one manifest like uh, like the most poisonous taco that you've ever eaten. Uh, punched you in the stomach 18 times in a row. All there, right. There is evil going on here. And then I'm going to run forward and I'm going to shout, Be evil! For God love! <laughs> I'm gonna regret saying Sounding for the gauntlet usually doesn't work for you. <laughs> that, I, that that's my group. I'm a member maybe, of the maybe gauntlet. Maybe chill it with the whole gauntlet thing. It it works great sometimes. Shush. <laughs> I'm literally gonna regret the cringe that comes with this. But <laughs> but as Job is running, Lily's gonna take the bone of animation and throw it at the other skeleton and say, I choose you, bone at you. Oh no. Um I want you to roll persuasion. Roll a persuasion. That's about all I can think of. Is there it, I can't remember. There's not an acting skill anymore, is there? Like uh, yeah, persuasion performance. Is the performance. There is a performance. Do performance mm -hmm. then. That's what I want. It turns into the skeleton directly in front of the other skeleton. Um, I unfortunately don't have another skeleton token just right here um, because I thought we would be done right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I see the... Uh, Y'all actually did it in a different order than, uh, than I thought. Um, so you throw the other skeleton at the, uh, at the current skeleton and it just stands there and looks at it. Like they wobble, they wa start wobbling in sync once again. Uh, it would, if you had rolled higher, it would have been they would have been wobbling in Backstreet Boys, but uh, because I can't <laughs> not make that joke, and they just stand there staring at each other, uh, kind of rocking back and forth at the same time, at the same beat, at, in the same motion. Is one a boy and one a girl? They're they are straight up skeletons. You have no idea. Okay. They're not, despite what the token that I grabbed very quickly shows, they are not clothed. Hmm. Okay, uh, can I attack this uh, weird yep. alchemy dude with my <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I was waiting until, like, the bonus things were done as other people sure. do it as you ran. So, what? yeah, yeah. Ooh, for the gut! You 21. have your, your wonderful little... Well, not even little. Your wonderful giant sword uh, basically just spins in a whirlwind in your hands. It is uh, like it is an extension of your own body. Comes directly down uh, as a stabbing motion into the uh, into the necromite's uh, shoulder. Uh, roll your damage. See, my war cry works a lot of the time. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> works every time. Sometimes. 75% of the time works every time. Yeah. 10 damages. You have cut this uh, Necromite in half. You have wow. started at the shoulder blade and stabbed directly down into the uh, in into its collarbone and then just proceeded to pull. It's not directly in half, but you've basically cut the third from uh, like directly down from the middle of the collarbone straight down and uh, they are they drop obviously what they're doing and <laughs> and drop you see <laughs> you see a skull uh fall out of its hand and roll forward toward the uh toward the stones in front of it and you see the other half of it its body just fall limp uh and and you see uh, in it uh, the mortar and pestle that, or the mortar that it was using to grind into the pestle. Uh, the skull that was the pestle. Doer. All right. I assume y'all have the the evil skeleton under control, right? It is still just standing there dancing. It's dancing. It is. The, they are. So I'm gonna shoot <laughs> the evil skeleton. <laughs> Do it with advantage because it is. Dancing. Because I puked. Yeah, exactly. Yes, you, did. you did. You puked, so now <laughs> you get to shoot a bonus. skeleton. <laughs> Sentences you never think you're going to say for 600, <laughs> Alex. So I do that twice? Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> yes. Yes, you hit the skeleton who I believe has an 11 AC. Okay. The skeleton disintegrates as you as your arrow hits it. It was apparently made out of chalk or something, <laughs> this green mossy stuff. Because when your arrow hits it from the top, it just kind of of powders out and then just crumbles all the way down into a chalky pile of greenish uh, dust that's at the feet of the other skeleton who is now just looking straight down at it still rocking side to side like it was doing. Bonichu, cover yourself in the dust of our enemies. The <laughs> Bonichu goes down and kneels down, grabs, takes all of the, the dust into its double hand like the cover of a Twilight novel and <laughs> pours it <laughs> over its head as though it's water in a shower like you're drenching yourself. And it now looks exactly like the necro necroskeleton. Uh, <laughs> and you, it just stands there, kind of dusty and green. <laughs> Sits there, rather. It's on its knees. This is a weird group I'm with. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just standing back there, like, face, like, straight up Picard face palming. <laughs> yep, that, that is. That is the correct answer, sir. <laughs> that is. <laughs> um, right, but yeah, I they are, that. they are, they are dead. D E D dead. I'd like okay. to loot the uh, two parts of the alchemist. Uh, you find on one in the pockets of the of the robe uh, that there are five tiny miniatures. There are ti five tiny miniature statues. Uh, each of them is a dragon, and there is a red one, a black one, a white one, a green one, and a blue one. Um, oh, we they killed him on his way to a and d game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he was just making the nachos, you guys. Um, <laughs> there were going to be some really gnarly nachos too, with the evil that he put off too. Um, they uh, they they weigh about five pounds each, if that matters to you, and uh, to, they're worth about five gold a piece. You would think on uh, on the black market, the the market. They don't they Dang. don't seem evil to you. They're just multicolored okay. dragon uh, statuettes. Well, I guess I'll I'll go ahead and I'll well, I'll, I'll pocket one and say. Uh, Slide of hand, did, sir. Did, oh no, I I didn't mean to be secretive about it. Like I'm holding the them up. I'm and I'm taking ah. one and putting it in my pocket and saying to the party, anybody want some of these weird statues, dragon things? Sure, we can sell them on D and D Bay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's like Fantasy uh, Costco. It's, exactly. So that's like the Walmart ver That's the Walmart version of Fantasy <laughs> Costco. <laughs> So there's four of us. So I'll I'll give everybody one of these, and I guess I'll take two because uh, yeah, you're the I one who found them. Yeah, that's fair. That's Sounds very good. equitable of you. I want the prettiest one. Well, which color do you think is the prettiest one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Then you're getting red. Okay. Fair enough. So, what you doing now? I guess I would say we continue on down this way and head head back. So, as so you move down the pathway, you you end up going back the way that you came. You you go through the the stream and nothing is is amiss. You see the uh the creek bed where you took a rest before as as being serene uh the companion's light however is starting to feel red in in when you're standing here the where it was golden and and warming it feels almost cold now and slightly red as you're walking along um but you continue along your way heading back toward Elturel. Are you doing anything while you're here? I'm I'm sure that redness is fine. I just want to peek at that little rose thing and make sure that's not red. <laughs> no, there is it is not emitting its glow at all. It looks like just a very nice, nicely preserved rose. Uh 
I mean, I'll roll a perception just to see if anything. No, everything, everything seems normal. I'm not even going to make you roll for okay. it on that one. Everything cool. on here uh, in the area seems like it's okay. It's just that you have a kind of a weird feeling about the, about with the way everything does. It's like, it feels a little colder than it should at this time of year. What happened to our horses? I believe they're in the clearing back there. <laughs> or amazingly, you're riding a horse now. <laughs> hey, look at that. It's like that um, old spice commercial. I'm on a horse. It is. I'm on a horse. Uh, it's, uh, it is. It's like uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising, that uh, where the gods are arguing back and forth and then something happens, then it changes into something else. That's what happens here. You have a horse now. Uh, I'm so you guys, we can... should hurry up and get home and see what's uh, going on. Keep moving. Yeah, so let's go talk to on... Anthar Foom. Uh, yes, you do need to return to Anthar Foom. Uh, you're you're heading down the way that you found uh, Grace and uh, got the the scarf uh, scarf threads where the wolves were. There's no no sign of there's no sign of any anything uh, bad at this point. There's uh, there's no uh, nothing really uh, out out of the ordinary for this. Um, but you, you feel like, uh, the, the, again, the, the light is, is off. Yeah. Uh, it's getting redder and redder as you get closer to El Terrell and you then make it back to the, to the outskirts of El Terrell and you start hearing sounds, you start hearing screams, uh, like just not even not light screams, not like, Oh, we're being raided by bandit screams. It's like, we're being dragged to hell screams and the most horrified screams that uh, you hear citizens right. and children, uh, just being horrified, uh, as they're, as just these fill these, these screams fill the air. Um, you see the air begin to split the the air in front of you begins to have a rift in front of uh where the companion is um the the void opens up in front of the companion and you see into the nine hells uh just flaming chains rip out of the void grab the companion uh flaming chain goes to each side of El Terrell. they're just going out like they are uh, weapons on like just a cat of nine tails that is just attaching itself uh, to the, to the ground around El Terrell. Uh Flames come up and the the fire is blinding along these. That that it's like the sun is exploding and you're seeing it take the city with it. Um, you hear a blast. You hear just a boom just deep explosion and your eyes are blinded your ears are ringing you can barely see you can barely hear and as your sight comes back as the the your ears just ring after this and you're beginning to hear you see a scorched rainbow scarf fluttering in the wind and the darkness like the light of the companion is gone the city in front of you is completely gone El Terrell is vanished. It has been dragged into the it has been dragged into the nine hills. All right, who oh, rolled a one? And did so, I notice the uh, purple scarf floating away? Uh, all I say is, eh, glad I only gave her a copper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad people can't take our money away from us. Um, <laughs> but and that ends the adventure uh, and leads into the descent into Avernus where El Terrell has been taken. Um, I think the girl with a rainbow scarf must have rolled a one. I think oh. that's, I believe that now it is your job to write the short story, the girl with the rainbow scarf and explain how she caused this to happen. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, but that's the adventure, everybody. I hope you had a good time. I really appreciate everybody coming and watching, uh, sticking with us. This happened a little bit longer than I anticipated. Uh, and we started a little bit later than I thought, uh, because of my computer dying. And I really, really, really appreciate Bama for you going through with this and, uh, streaming it on there. That, that is fantastic for you. And, uh, I have All, a question. Uh, air troll? Oh, yeah, sure thing. 
when can we do descent into avernus i need it now <laughs> I, I really hope that we can like i was hoping that if, if this went well and y'all wanted to we could set up times to do it so hopefully we'll be able to if y'all all want to or have a moving party in and out however we want to but i would love to i like it so oh, that cool sounds great it um, sounds like sakura wants to join us yeah it does <laughs> <laughs> how uh how was it air troll how did everything go did uh did you have fun uh, I had an absolute blast. yeah i had an absolute blast it was uh it was a lot more fun than the uh 16 year old me would have thought it was isn't it just i mean exactly <laughs> yeah it's uh you, you see it and it's like i'm gonna roll some dice and i'm gonna write on paper uh i rolled a one when i did that by the way i just want you to know that i actually rolled a 20 when i said that and i rolled a one so that's what happened to el trail um <laughs> <so>. <laughs> my own fault for mocking D D. um but really it is real like sakura said here it's real collaborative storytelling and y'all made this such a different campaign than what reading it was and it's it's great this was actually uh for those watching this was actually a dm's guild um a dm's guild adventure that actually leads into avernus it's called uh Baldur's gate uh the fall of eltrell it's really really good um I really appreciate y'all coming out and y'all made the the goal y'all y'all hit us at $150 instead of the 120. I didn't know if we would uh, get anywhere near there. Y'all y'all showed up and you showed up. So thank you so 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 much y'all. Um it's late. I should probably go to uh have to go to work tomorrow and uh, do things like an adult. Um that doesn't involve killing drow uh and dragons, but Yeah, for you it's like 11 o'clock, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. So no big deal, but I really appreciate y'all coming out. Like I had a blast doing this. Like this was so much fun. Um Well, thank you for putting this all together, Beach and GM yeah. and everything. Thank yeah. you. You did great. Thank you. Um, so I guess that wraps it up. Uh, this will be on Twitch and when it is no longer on Twitch, I will put this on the uh, geek to geek, uh, YouTube channel so that we can link it and embed it and do stuff like that. Fantastic. All right. Ooh. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone for watching. For the gutlet. <laughs> <laughs>